coming up next on Two Cops, One Donut. So my buddy, I'm walking out of the sheriff's office. I was getting done with paperwork. I'm walking out, and he's like, you better hurry. And I'm like, it's a bull. He's <laughs> not going to go fast. He's like, no, brother, you probably authorized code. If something hits that, it could kill a person. And I'm like, what? I didn't, you know. Yeah, what, you don't think about you, it. Yeah, yeah, like what? He's like, yes. And I just got my first cowboy hat, right? And I had my felt Hell hat. Hell yeah. You know, and I, I'm a guy that five years ago, you want a cowboy hat? I'm like, I'm not that dude. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's like, oh yeah. Now I know that, yeah. I, you know, American Hat Company knows me. I go up there and they're like, hey man, we're going to make you a hat. And they're amazing at it. Going back to this call, I throw that hat on. I'm walking out and he's like, hey, and this is a dude with experience. When you get out there, had no clue he's jacking with me. When you get out there, you get out of your car. You go up to the bull and you look at him and you, I want you to point with your left hand where you want him to go. And you take that hat and you say, yeah, just like that ah, at the bull. All right, welcome back to Cops One Donut. I'm your host, Eric Levine. Today I have with me the one, the only LinkedIn champion, Banning Sweatland. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thank Did I you say very that much. right? Sweatland? Yep, like, Sweatland. All right, cool. Um, I was talking to my wife about your name. I was like, she's got a cool name. I think it's like Channing. She's like, oh, Channing? I was like, <laughs> uh, and so then we got down yeah. there and you got here. It's like, it's Channing? And you're like, no, Banning. I was Banning. That's right. So I fucked your name up. My bad. <laughs> no um, worries. First off, cheers, sir. Cheers. What are we cheers. drinking today? Uh, a little bit of Tito's, a little bit of some Splash of Sprite. There or, you go. Or vice Tito's. versa. Texas made. That's right. What do you got there? Today is Smoke Wagon Malted Rye, sir. Straight rye whiskey. I didn't realize I'm such a rye fan. Um, <laughs> so the Smoke Wagon, as you can tell, is one of my, it is my favorite. Sure. Favorite brand of whiskey. And um, I bought this bottle maybe two or three months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, not the specific bottle, but uh, the rye from them, right? Because uh, they didn't have any other smoke wagon. I was like, "Well, screw it, I'll try it." <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I like a rye or not. Right. And uh, turns out, I, I rather enjoy the ryes. It looks like it's from Vegas. Is that what I'm reading on there? Yes, it oh, is. Yep, made in Vegas. They the bottles are fucking neat because right. it's got the old wax uh, inlay. I mean, when you think of a old western and the bottles they have at the, I mean, that's what I picture. Yeah. yeah. So no, it's good stuff. That's though. pretty awesome. Yeah, so what's up, buddy? How you been? Living the dream, brother. Living That's what the dream. I like to hear. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> funny story. I got in trouble for saying living the dream on my base. Because um, when I say it, mm-hmm. I'm being genuine. Sure. Like, I actually mean it. And right. I'm doing my reserve time down at Lackland. I'm, I volunteer for guard gate duty, which is well beneath my rank and all that stuff. Right, but right. I'm there for 24 days. I don't care. I just want to go. And if it helps these kids out, I'll go do it. I don't care. It ain't a big deal to me. But when I do my job, I do my job. So for me, when people come to my area and I'm talking Mm. to these cars coming into the base where there's nuclear weapons and all that stuff, I'm using old cop tricks. I'm generating conversation, trying to get some sort of reaction to see if you give an unnatural reaction. So they're coming up, you know, hey, sir, how are you doing? I'm saluting whatever they are. And they're like, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm like living the dream, sir. You know, I was like, it, yeah. can't complain. The sun's 110. What else can you do? But sure. smile. <laughs> and and you're hoping for that reaction. Exactly. And then, so that's kind of the print. You know, yeah. it's short. It's sweet. But I don't just stand there. Welcome yeah. to the gates of Lackland. Welcome yep. to the gates of Lackland. You know, it's I'm, definitely I'm, job related. Yeah. Yes. So I'm not doing that. But when you deal with punk 18 year olds that do that job. Yes. Every day. Yes. And they. They don't like it, which I get. I understand. And I'm a part-timer. I'm coming in, mm-hmm. you know, knowing full well that this isn't my day-to-day. Right. So I get called into the commander's office, and uh, he's like, you know, basically, I don't like this shit. I don't like my guys out there. And he's like, you know, I expect better from reservists, da 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 You know, you guys, I, he's like, you shouldn't be jaded RNS. I was like, so I'm just, I'm taking it, you know. Right. So what else are you supposed to do? I'm just standing there. And uh, he's like, you got anything to say? And I'm like, permission to speak freely sir and he's like go for it and i was like all right and so i explained to him like, sure here's why i was like i'm not being sarcastic i actually mean it i was like this is i'm, I'm taking a break from my real job to come out and hang out with the future i was like it's yep. fun i was like i'm having a good time and uh i said and i'm i'm screening in a way uh, probably mm-hmm. a way you're not used to seeing but this is why here's the why behind why i do it and he's like fuck 
That's what he says right away. <laughs> Fuck. I was like, sir. And he's like, I didn't think of it that way. And he's like, I wasn't expecting that. And he's like, that's, a, that's good. I actually, he's like, I got no issues with that. He's like, uh, I hate the saying, live in the dream. Sure. He's like, but, uh, <laughs> and, and yeah, I under, understand where he's coming from too. You know, yeah. if, uh, just to give you an example, I'd, I'd ask officers that have obviously had a bad week. How are you doing? Or deputy, you know, how, how are you doing this week? Like, yeah. Living the dream, sir. And you can, you know, just the tone, just right. everything on there. You're like, yeah, very well. I got your dinner tonight. We'll see if we can't make that better. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, what had happened to me, I guess, is whoever was coming through the gate thought I was being sarcastic and they complained on me. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so that it, it kind of went up from there. And But it, it was funny because afterwards, like all these troops that, you know, full-time guys, the 365, you know, active duty guys. I walk into the office and my ass isn't, you know, it's still there. And they're just like, the fuck did you say? And I was like, told them the truth. And they're like, holy shit. No one's ever survived ass chewing from him. It was Colonel Whitehead at the time. And, uh, I ended up getting coined from him, which was cool. He's one of the few commanders or Colonel, whatever you want to call him at the time. Um, who was in the museum and still serving. He was a part of the museum wow. and still serving. So it's awesome. Pretty freaking cool. That is. But uh, enough about me, sir. Um, let's get into you. Um, this episode is going to be about, I have no clue yet. Um, we haven't really discussed it. No, those are usually the best episodes. That's, to, yeah, yeah, and I was going to say, and that's usually my favorite ones because I don't have any clue what direction this is going to go. I can tell you that Banning has a following of like in the millions. He's got a <laughs> ton of people on LinkedIn. Um, and he is, uh, I, I don't want to say you're controversial. Not controversial, just... No, um, real. Uh, real. Yeah, I would say more, you got that iconic sheriff about you. Fair? Like, Very fair. like Lamb and um, uh, Chief Clark. Um, uh, who else? Who's the guy in Florida? Uh, Brady. Grady. Yes. Grady. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, you know, uh, Mark Lamb. All those guys have like this cool American flag uh, uh, stigma. But you know, what? I don't know how to sure, explain sure. it. No, that's, but you, you know right it there. when you see it. You know, you it's as iconic as seeing uh, uh, the Terminator or seeing, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger with a, a cigar in his mouth. No yes, matter what he's yes. doing, like that's what it reminds me. Of. Like that's freaking America right there. This dude came from <laughs> Austria and he just owns it. He owns yeah. it over here. He even got elected. Yep, came from nothing and look at him now. Yeah, you know, yeah. To each his own on his his whatever he supports, but look at him. Yeah, you know, I'm, you can't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's making your own stars, exactly. I guess. So, exactly. well, sir, um, where w- let's get into you and where you're from and all that stuff, sure. so people kind of get an idea of your background. Sure. Uh, originally from Texas, uh, adopted at birth uh, for the right reasons, and basically lived all over this country, man, and uh, uh, literally about 23 different schools around oh. this country. Uh, from Vegas to to Arizona to Ohio, Maine, Florida, Georgia, Texas. Uh, missing a lot, but just a 30,000-foot view of it. Um, always wanted to be a police officer since I was about five years old. I used to write my grandmother tickets for vacuuming too fast. Okay. Uh, so you always knew? Yes, always knew. And when I turned 18, uh, I knew college wasn't for me at the time. And, uh, that's why I love Mike Rowe. I'm sure you know who he oh, is, yeah. you know, he's dirty big, jobs, you know, and you know, I wasn't saying I was experienced enough to be a welder either as a tech school, but I had to figure out something mostly in the United States. You gotta be 21 years old uh, to be a police officer. And I was 18 and I was trying to figure out my career path. I, we had a career day in, uh, Toronto, Ohio is where I went to high school. I'm from Texas. Yes, it's Ohio. But anyway, <laughs> I was up in the area at the time. That's a and, toilet uh, emission. It is. Just and so you know. It is. And so they, they brought in the, the recruiters. Uh, all of them came in, and I kind of saw how the, the, the one in blues and the Marine Corps got looked at uh, ah. by folks and the way he carried himself. And I'm like, I like that. I like the professional look. His name was Sergeant Smiley. He was my recruiter. <laughs> Uh, I went in in and took an ASVAB test. I was horrible in high school, horrible in middle school, did not care. All I wanted to do was go ride dirt bikes on the weekends, hang out with my buddies. There was nothing to do in Toronto, Ohio, but we'd make make fun doing something. Yeah. 
decided to uh, take the ASVAB, went up there, and then he said, hey, dude, you did great on this. You can do whatever job you want. And I'm like, man, I guessed like half that test. <laughs> but hey, cool. He put the MOS book in front of me, and I asked him, I said, okay, well, I'm, I'm crazy enough to join the Marines because everybody said I was crazy. My father was an officer in the Air Force. What... Making sure the cameras. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I <bet>. was like, <laughs> I don't see me or you all the way, so I need to figure out what side oh, it is. Yeah, small Sorry. screen. No worries. Yeah. But uh, I said, what has got a, a big washout rate? What is something that's tough? I mean, I don't want to just be. And he's like, ah, man, he's like, just go in and do. And I said, well, what'd you do? And, and uh, he's like, well, I was a, I was a mechanic and uh, did motor T and stuff like that. And, and he still got to look cool. And I was like, well. I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I had nothing against it. I'm sure it serves you well. and it'll serve you well when you get out. And, and then he starts going through and he's like, well, this is a real high washout rate. He's like, I put two guys in this last year. They washed out, went back to infantry, said it was too tough. And it's Marine Corps security force company and, or security forces. And in a lot of branches, security forces like the air force and stuff, they don't, uh, or, and, and I believe the army, but I may be wrong. It's more of an MP line. It's yeah. You're law police. enforcement and, it's kind of a two tier because that's what I do. Sure. Your, your base security and then your law enforcement. Sure. So. Sure. And in the, <clears throat> in the Marine Corps, excuse me, <clears throat> in the Marine Corps uh, security forces is, is, is security, but you're guarding our nation's assets. It's not, you're not going out and, and affecting arrests. You're not patrolling base. Oh, okay. You're, you're taking an asset and you're protecting it. It's um, from either uh, uh, people or usually items that the military has. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was, it was amazing. You know, I went through training and I loved it. You know, in high school, I didn't, I didn't like it, but this I loved and I excelled in, got meritoriously promoted a couple times, only did a short stint in the Marines, just one, one enlistment, but I needed that gap filler from 18 to 21 yeah. to become a police officer. Oh, so man. I tell kids that is the best resume builder you can yes, get. Yes, it is. Uh, got out, came to Texas uh, with my U-Haul and had a little Pontiac Sunfire and a U-Haul with a crotch rocket in it because, you know, that's that's what we need as a young man coming back to Texas. A uh, Sunfire, huh? Yeah. You had a lot of girls tiny, in high school oh, that had man, that car. I'm telling you, it was, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was cheap at the time. So I don't know if people can tell, but you're not a small dude. No, so. no. I, usually I just went by myself in it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I got back here and... Um, Back then it was called uh, T close. And now it's called T Cole. Yeah. And I didn't know, I didn't know where to start. And Google was horrible. Um, eventually I, I forced a state trooper to stop me by, I, I always saw him sitting there and I was like, you know what? It's, I don't want to ever just pull over and scare him. I was like, let me just go 10 over and, and I'll probably get a ticket, but at least I'll get some questions answered. Cause nobody would tell me anything on the phone. And they're like, do you have a degree Dallas, you know, right. Rockwall, um, at the time, Rockwall County. Yeah. So you have a degree and I'm like in life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I just want to put it out there. I don't recommend that people use that tactic to talk to cops. It's, sure. It's, it's not the best. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's disclaimer. A, that's dumb kid shit. Disclaimer. Right <laughs> and I've had people do it to me. Uh, matter of fact, I was on a, on a video a few years ago and somebody had watched that video and they, knew of me and knew where I was going to be sitting and they tried the same thing. Now he didn't get a ticket. It was kind of funny. He made me laugh, but, uh, I don't, I don't recommend that either, but <laughs> you know, so this was back in, uh, uh, late 2001. It was right after nine 11, just got out of the service, pulled that deal. That guy happened to be, thank God, his former Marine sat on the side of the highway for about an hour, hour and a half. And he walked me through how to do it. And, uh, I knew I either wanted to be a state trooper, eventually become a, a Texas Ranger, which I still think is the epitome of law enforcement, or go through the academy and just become yeah. law enforcement and, and and figure out where I'm supposed to be. And that's that's what that's the, the route that I took. So here I am today, and I I, I was at a a, a mid level city in the Metroplex and did a almost a complete career there. Uh, retired, and now I'm in in a, a rural county area. And uh, I haven't looked back, man. It's been amazing. Dang. 21 years in law enforcement now. Yeah. And I love it just as much, if not more, from the day that yeah. I started. I, I just, okay, so full disclosure, last night was my first night at a roll call as a sergeant. Um, got to sit down. It was, I was nervous, right. you know, excited. Because um, sure. for me, uh, you saw the picture of my old man, yeah. like, the earliest I can remember, I never remembered him as a cop. I remembered him as a sergeant sure. and I knew, you know, some of his friends and they were sergeants and, you know, it's like, 
that's the iconic memory of a cop for me as a kid. Sure. So the whole time I'm just like, Sergeant is like, I've been, my whole career has been around getting to Sergeant. I want to go higher. Don't get me wrong. Sure. But this is, this is the role. Well, congratulations for one. Thank you. For, for picking up the stripes. And yeah. I know when I, when I picked it up the first time walking by him, cause I was slick sleeve, you know, or, or mm-hmm. just an officer my, most of my career. And uh, when I, when I picked it up, just walking by a mirror on the road and you see those stripes and I was like, Oh, supervisor. Oh, that's me. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Kind of one of those yeah. deals, but it, it, it took some getting used to. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, so I sit down at roll call and I'm like, um, I'm looking and I'm like, Jesus, like th- these yeah. kids, like, you, you know, it's, I don't mean to say kids, but sure, you know, sure. they're, you're just trying to, to steer them in the right direction and tell oh, yeah. them, tell them how to have fun. Right. And, so the point I was going to get to, 21 years law enforcement at that time, uh, me 17, I still love this job in a time yes. when not a lot of people, mm-hmm. rightfully so, a little jaded in the career field, but I'm an eternal optimist and it's not, that's not a common thing for what we do. So I'm sitting down and I'm like, first thing I tell them, it's okay to do police work. I was like, I got you. Like, I just want you to know, I got your back. I'm going to show you some cool shit. I'm going to teach you how to be proactive. Um, our job as cops is to figure out ways around the newest rules, right. not break the law, not anything like that. But every time a rule is put in place, we just have to figure out how to navigate that and get around it and continue to do the job. Or be really well at articulation. Yes. That's where a lot of people yeah. suffer and get in trouble in my experience. Right. Me is an example on several things, you know, get into a big pursuit, like I said, I was at a, a mid-level agency before, and it ended up in an area uh, called the Stockyards, and okay. we were going around, circle and circle and circle. Uh, <laughs> know that, that area. That agency's uh, Air One was in the air, and you're welcome. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I happened to know the pilot, and he, he helped me out with my proposal one night. Anyway. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Uh, Hell yeah. So. Must was be a lucky guy. This? It was, you know, and I was so happy for that pursuit. I mean, that pursuit. You know, a 20 minute pursuit can be long on a person. It's like a fight, you know, right. if you don't control that tactical breathing, yeah. over whatever you want to call it, box breathing, you're going to wear your body out. Mm-hmm. And then this one was great. We got to, you know, that agent, the larger agency helped us, you know, we had a good 50 or 60 of them and we had three of us and, <laughs> you know, we, uh, we, we took the guy into custody. Nobody got hurt. There were two children in the back, which if I would have known, we wouldn't even have pursued, you know, yep. to follow our policy. Um, but it, it was a great outcome. And then I got so excited and I got back to the station. And I'm like, all right, we're going to type this report. And I'm, and I was, I did two paragraphs and I sent it up for review. And they're like, mm. Mm, 20, so you, 20 minutes, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, anyway, just back to the articulation. Yeah. I, but I got so excited and then I was so worn out when I got back to the state. And I had been in hundreds of pursuits, but this one was so textbook. Mm-hmm. I knew what I wanted to write down on paper and I was like, Hey, in my back of my mind, the video will cover it all, but the video doesn't cover it all. But if you don't write it yep. and you know, on discovery and everything, you got to have everything down in your narrative. And, and it was just a good learning curve for me. And that was a, a pivotal moment in my career to where I wanted to help other officers become as articulated in their reports, just so things don't have to go to court so much. You know, right. um, I think a lot of things do go to court, but if you're just well articulated, you're going to be covered. And plus it just really helps your agency as well. I yeah. Mean, shows. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was just telling them last night, I'm like, you know, we also like, we haven't had a conversation yet since I walked in this office without us swearing. Like I get it. You guys are going to curse. It's going to be on camera. I was like, the only thing I ask is that you own it in the report because that covers you later. Yes. It's when they find it and you didn't report it. Yep. Uh, whether you did it intentionally or not intentionally, it doesn't matter. Sure. I was like, but if you're swearing at a suspect, you need to learn the articulation. I can't have you say I was stressed out. Right. That doesn't work. Right. right? There's a purpose behind yeah. it. You just don't know how to articulate it yet. Yes. I said, yes. the reason you're swearing is because you tried talking normal. We hear that in the mm-hmm. video. It didn't work. Right. And you didn't want to have to use force. So you escalated your language. Yep. And that has helped. That's it. On many occasions, and you know, and, I, and I'm a God fearing man, and being in the Marines and now being in law enforcement 21 plus years, I never thought I was going to be that guy that was, oh, F this, shit, and you know, all this other stuff. And, and now it's, 
again, how you articulate it, but you're bringing things to a certain level. So other things don't happen. Yes. Just like you were trying to explain or you explained very well. Uh, it has helped. If you're law enforcement, stop and listen to me right now. If you're a police department that does not have an LPR system, Insight is offering the first 10 agencies, that means one agency apiece, gets one camera for free. You have to tell them that two cops, one donut sent you. You heard me right. If you're a police agency that does not have an LPR system yet, or does have an LPR system, and you're not happy with the product you have, Insight is offering you a free camera, no strings attached, and they will install it. I have 10 to give out. Tell them two cops, one donut sent you or reach out to me and I will get you in contact. If you're a business owner or an HOA, please stop and listen to me right now. If you're just listening to the audio, do yourself a favor and watch the YouTube version of this episode to get a visual of what I'm about to tell you. I want to tell you guys about Insight LPR. It's a license plate reader. If your agency, community, or business is looking to invest in LPR to help solve and deter crime or to make your community safer, Insight LPR has my vote of confidence. I've met with their team. They know their LPR PRs, guys. Uh, they're the real deal. They bring over 75 years of collective experience to building LPR cameras and the software that supports communities across the country. The other thing I really like about this team is how much they listen to law enforcement. They understand the importance of working together with law enforcement and getting their input as they build and innovate products and their service to match the needs of law enforcement. In other words, when I complain or have suggestions to make their damn camera better, they actually do it. The Insight LPR team is extremely passionate and takes pride in their product product development, which makes their cameras some of the most durable cameras in the market. For the gear nerds out there, what that means is this stuff's made of military grade aluminum and is nitrogen purged, whatever that means. This design makes the cameras rugged and able to withstand harsh weather elements. Here's the big selling point for me. Their nighttime scan accuracy is higher than most of the leading competitors. In my opinion, this is what sets them apart. As we know, the majority of crimes occur at night, so it's critical to have high scan accuracy at night. Insights cameras check the box with the nighttime plate read accuracy greater than 96%. 96% guys, that's pretty freaking high. If your community is looking to invest in LPR technology, reach out to one of their experts today or reach out to me. Tell them two cops, one donut sent you. And supervisors in the past would call me if I was middle level or whatever. They're like, hey, you need to get with Officer Schmuckatelli over here because he said this on a traffic stop and I need you to review it and then give me your what you think on your opinion. And I go review it and I'm like, well, he, he didn't taser him. And because he used that language, how he did and his body posturing and everything, it did not become a use of force. Yeah. And, and so I, I went and shook that officer's hand. I was like, brother, you did that very well. You got to complain on it. I'm going to do the best I can to, to fall on the sword for you yeah. as we should as, as good supervisors. Um, I had a few good supervisors in the past and they did that for me a lot. Uh, but it's, it's okay to do that yeah. in, in certain situations. You know, we're not going to go work an off-duty job at a church yeah. and with our, you know, with our, with our wand sticks guiding them out and, and, and yelling, dropping F-bombs on these people because they're not, it's not the right time, the right place, but, yeah. but there is. And I'm not supporting it, but, uh, but I am in a sense, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, so you did the Marines. Mm -hmm. um, any college? Did you go to college at all? I, I did a, a, a couple years of college. It didn't get me anywhere. Uh, okay. You know, use a little bit of GI money on it when I was in Georgia and yep. it didn't do anything with it, just some basics. Yeah. That's the only reason I got my master's degree is because I didn't want to let that thing sure. go to waste. I yeah. mean, people don't know this, but you don't just get the GI Bill. You actually put money into it. Sure. Only 1100 bucks. It's not that much, yeah. but um, it, I, got, it got me a degree from TCU, which oh, that's awesome. cost a lot. Uh, yes. I imagine. Yeah. I don't know a lot of guys that went there. I did get 23 hours from TCC in the police cap. There you go. 23, you know, that's not yep. bad. You know, you had to test out at the end of that. And I used my GI Bill to pay for my police academy. Yeah, buddy. I didn't, I didn't have a backer when I went through. I was just a yeah. just a veteran going through it and finally got picked up yeah. afterwards. So for people listening, if you're like, what do you mean you didn't have a backer? Well, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, in this uh, nation, not everybody gets picked up by an agency and they put them through an academy. So um, like my agency has their own police academy. Other agencies, especially smaller agencies, I think it's like 80% or 90% of agencies are 10 officers or less, um, and they have to go through a uh, academy that's usually at a college somewhere, yep. and it's a mix of a bunch of people, and some agencies will sponsor. They'll say, all right, you know, Banning, we're going to pay for you to go to this academy, and then others <laughs> don't, mm -hmm. and they're just like, well, when you get certified, come to us and apply. Sure. 
and you got to put yourself through. So a lot of people don't know that. They think that you became a cop. They pay right. for you. No, they ain't. Well, the first month that I was going through, I mean, you still got to pay bills. And I wasn't I wasn't backed or sponsored. Right. So, I mean, I was an armored truck driver at night <laughs> just for the first month. Really? Uh, just to make those bills. That's and then I was awesome. like, boy, we got a lot of tests coming up. This is something. So I, I figured out a way to, to make ends meet until, yeah. until the end of the academy. I so. made more money. At my last, the place I work now, I made more money in the academy than I made when I got cut loose because of the GI Bill money I was getting. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was that's awesome. awesome. And being in the, in the DFW area, it's based on the cost of living. Sure. So where you're at. So, psh, right. shit, I'm in the DFW yeah, area. It was, yeah. uh, it was nice. Yeah, a little, little expensive to live down there. Yeah, sometimes. yeah. So I was, I love it. It is funny you say that. I My house was $143,000. You know, in 2012. Right. And right. I could have got a house the same in Michigan where I yeah. made a lot less. So oh, for yeah. me, the cost of living at the time, sure. I think it has shot up. In the well, last well, well, it it has. So I, uh, on the south side of of where you work at, um, we bought a house 2015 for 150000 Three bedroom, two bath, two car garage, small backyard, cookie cutter, big yeah. neighborhood. I don't like those neighborhoods, but it was what was available. And we had a baby. I had my third baby on the way. And uh, now if you could, I get an alert every month from one of the realtor websites on what the house is worth now. So we paid 150 for it. Yeah. Um, got in a bidding war even back then to get the house. Mm -hmm. We got in the bidding war. I think it got up to 170000 And then, you know, the VA loan was like, um, you can have 150 So hopefully they take it. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's what it's worth. Now it's worth three hundred and seventy five thousand. Yeah. I mean from, from fifteen till now, yep. nothing is just the market. You yeah. Know, and so Yeah. Mine isn't quite that high, but it's pretty close. Right. Just because of the updates we've done and you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. i I love it. I'm not I'm not mad at it. But no. I wish I lived in an area like where you serves because right. I want rural, I want the dream for me, five acres with a pond and a lot of deer that come in and out. Sure. That's sure. the dream for me because I like to fish. Um, I will shoot hogs if they show up, but yes. it, I don't prefer them. But right. I'll well, shoot deer all day. It, speaking of the area where I live, if we can segue down that, uh, first of all, my stress level, when there's rush hour, it adds about six seconds to my commute. Um, I live an hour from the sheriff's office. I mean, I'm not an hour. I live a one mile from the sheriff's office. I could walk to work if I had to, but I've got a take home car. Okay. Um, no traffic, even during, you know, you know, go drop your kids off. My wife would be like, man, it took 10 minutes to drop her off this morning. <laughs> and, and we, we say that as a joke because down here in the Metroplex, it, it's not, it's an event. Yeah. You know, when you got to go somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, I've got to go to, I've got to go to Fort Worth to do something. I got to go to Dallas to do something. You know, you, you're planning it out. I mean, you know, I don't want to be there at five o'clock because I'm going to be yeah. sitting on, you know, on the yep. high five, whatever. Up there, there's no traffic. But <laughs> I'd finally bought my dream car about six months, uh, seven months ago now. and uh, Which is? It's a Hellcat. Oh, so, yeah, so, okay, be careful. They're uh, highly stolen. Yes, they are. Um, up in my area, I hate to say, I, I, I love to say this, actually. Um, people still leave doors unlocked. They still... Okay. Uh, uh, they support the police 100% wholeheartedly. I, it, I'm going to segue into something else really fast. I, I was at the city police department up in uh, our county seat as the patrol sergeant, and I'm, I'm getting out in my first day going, going out, going through the square in our little town, it's just like any square in Texas, and the, the first hand came up out of a car passing me. The first hand came up. I'm like, oh, here we go. And I thought it was going to be the the great, you know, yeah, the, the yeah. middle finger because that's what I got a lot down here in the metro, and I'm used to it. You know, hey, well, I'll just wave to him back, kill him with kindness, right? Yeah. Well, this person came up and they waved, and I was like, "How are you?" <laughs> oh my! I mean, literally, I, I wanted to turn around and go shake their like, "Thank right. you for waving." Pull over. Effort. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Here's a ten dollar gas card or something, you know, for for being nice to them. And then it was everywhere. I'd walk into a a twenty four hour gas station. Down here, there's a lot of it too, but you know, the clerk's really nice and, and greets you. People come in yeah. that have been clubbing all night and they're with their designated drivers and they come in there to get coffee or whatever. And they're coming up to shake your hand. How are you? Can I buy you a hot dog? Yep. I, boy, you know, and yep. then just eating at restaurants. I mean, people paying Pay for, for your, your food. Your I mean, food, just yeah. over and over up there. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's the rural area is great, but I go and segue back to, to having the Hellcat. 
my wife and I like to take night drives if I'm off, which is not very often, and we'll go for a country drive. The speed limit's 75, put the cruise on 75, and you're jamming out to your music. And mm-hmm. Like I said, you're I'm You're full just, of shit, but... You, well, <laughs> <laughs> 75 and a 75. Yeah, that's right, and, yeah. Uh, you got a Hellcat, you ain't doing 75. <laughs> so we went, up to, we went up to a city called Bowie, and uh, we ate at this Mexican joint. It's really good. It's called Spicy Mexico. And, and then we, we were coming back, and I think it was about... Night, yeah, they closed at nine. We were there till they closed. Coming back, and my wife's like, "I want to drive it." I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> you can, no problem." I mean, we're we're here on Highway yeah. 59. It's a lot of a lot of turns, and she is literally going under the speed limit. She's got 707 horsepower at her fingertips. It's her first time really driving yeah. it, and she's doing a great job. Yeah. And then we come around another corner, and an armadillo comes out. Oh no. And it's like an armadillo on steroids. It's not like a little one outside in right. Tarrant County here. It comes out. It's like, Rrr. but it's, yeah. you know, it, it literally steps out. He's been left in his whole life. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It steps out. And to, to, to my wife's defense, I love you, honey. I know you're going to watch this. Uh, there was no time to break. 18 wheeler coming in the other lane. No breakaway. You, yeah. you have to Don't take swerve. the blunt of the impact and yep. do the right thing. And you know it wasn't that bad. I think it was only seventeen thousand dollars worth of damage to oh. my front end from the from the armadillo. That's um, not bad. No, no. <laughs> First, I looked at it. You know, I've got smoke coming out. We're about seven miles oh, from the house. Oh shit! Got the radiator. It got the supercharger cooler, both radiator cores, Ouch. rack and pinion steering. I mean, that car sits a half inch off the ground. Right. You know, and it just it's a street sweeper. It's got just, that little lip on the front. Yes, yeah. Yeah. You know, for for driving the speed limit. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, so we hit that and I, we, we decided to drive it home. Hopefully we didn't cause more damage, got it to the shop uh, a month and a half later. I've got this new car. Now it's in the body shop. I mean, that was the ongoing joke a month and a half later. I get the car back. I'm super pumped. And, uh, we decided to go on a, on a night drive again. And, um, I found a raccoon. Damn, bro. At a uh, 65 miles an hour getting up to the speed limit. And it was the same thing. And, uh, I have dash cams in all our vehicles. It just helps with insurance and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. I have a 16 year old driver if that tells you anything. So, um, raccoon came out and it's one of those situations to where you have to take the brunt of the impact. And mm-hmm. I, uh, I went through the alphabet on, on curse words as we're pulling over. Cause I just <laughs> got the car back. I got right. a full tank of gas and we were going to go have a great dinner. And it was one of those things to where I didn't get out to look at the damage. It wasn't smoking. I may have turned around really fast and lost half my back tires turning around to go back towards the house. Mm-hmm. Got home quickly. Sounded like a crumpled up Mountain Dew can going down the road because I had all this plastic hanging down, you know, because everything is plastic nowadays. And got pulled in the driveway. I said, honey, go get your keys. Got into her traverse. And I just, <laughs> we're going for a friggin' drive, <laughs> you know, and I just got out. So now my car is still sitting in my, in my front driveway. We got to get it down to the body shop. But one of these okay. days... We're going to enjoy that car. So right now it's still a low mileage vehicle. Well, I, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Brotherhood for the Fallen. I did, yes. a, did an interview um, for these guys. They back the Brotherhood for the Fallen. So oh, that's um, awesome. That's what he specializes in is, really? is, is Dodge. Yeah. Oh, everything. that's awesome. He does the TRXs, does all of it. Oh, man. So, yeah, I went and talked to, to that guy because I've got that Dodge Rebel out there. Right. And um, I'm, a, I'm a stock guy. Like, that's how yeah. that thing was when I bought it and that's, sure. that's how it'll die. I just don't have the money to put in it. Right. If I'm going to put money in it, it's going to be more of this stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. um, but I love my truck and we were BSing while we we're doing it. I was like, so you could turn my truck into that thing. And one of those TRXs, he's like, Oh yeah. And, uh, Good dude, yeah. um, good good spot. It's in uh, Fort Worth. If you're ever interested, oh heck yeah, man, I'll have to I'll have to yeah. get a hold of him yeah. for sure. He's his car. His uh, he holds two records. I think two world records for his vehicles. Really, that he's put together. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he says it, it, the TRXs that he makes, right? Um, which they're already amazing, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. And he says like you can literally like no joke watch the gas tank. Oh yeah, it, I think it's. Wow. it's I think everybody's law enforcement wise is familiar. I think what was it down in Houston or Austin when they chased that Hellcat? Yeah, and it went forever. Mm-hmm. And the helicopter's like, well, we're trying to catch up. And it's outrunning the helicopter. I mean, they do. So they have a they have top speed of two hundred and four miles an hour. Um, but when you when you get on that gas, I I don't know this from experience because mine keeps getting wrecked. Um, but doing research, watching videos and stuff, if you lay onto that gas. 
you can watch it, a stock one slowly move and it takes about 23 minutes oh, on full throttle. If you have the open space, sit, yeah. you know, close track, whatever, 10 miles long, you can actually empty that tank of gas in 23 minutes. Oh. That's how much the fuel injectors are throwing oh. in there. Yeah. No, thank you. So no, thank you. That's that, why I want to put the lower pulleys on yeah. mine, make it an E85, bump it up to about 1100 horsepower, you know, to, to go to the store and get the milk. And right. well, yeah. my wife told me, so this is a funny story and she's going to laugh really hard, probably punch me in the shoulder. Okay. Gave my, I had a similar car. It's a 2015, 2016 uh, Ram quad cab. It's just the big horn. Yeah. And I've got the pedal commander in it, a air, whatever, cold air intake, just a little bit better on gas. It's got a six inch lift on it, big tires, and it's just a Texas truck. Yeah. My son turned 16, busted his ass in school, busted his ass in athletics, gave him the truck. As long as he gets a job, yada, yada, yada. And uh, he backed it into a fence within a week. But that, well, that's besides the point. That's not what I'm getting at. Well, I told my wife, I was like, yes, I have a take-home car. Gave my son the truck. I need to get a car. She's like, you're right. You're right. But I'm going to give you a stipulation since you seem to always want to get a new vehicle every couple of years. And that's going to be four doors in a trunk. She thought I was going to go get a Lamb. I mean, I can't even afford a Lamb. But a sports, you know, right. big-time sports car. It's like, cool. So I already knew it in my mind. I'm going to get a four-door charger hellcat <laughs> so rolled up in the driveway and had that and she's like oh you got a chart it sure is loud and yeah, yeah. It's, it's a hellcat yeah man. my um my oh. dream car if i'm gonna get a car i've had two is the wrx mm -hmm. now i don't like doing what the teenage kids do to them because sure. it is very much a teenage car um yes. to it uh, good I, performance vehicle though. Yes. So, you know, I'm from the North. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. snow and all that stuff. I like the all wheel drive, true all wheel drive, yes. but I want to lift it oh, okay. like a rally car Yes. and make it as borderline street legal rally car ish as I can. So if I go on a camping trip, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be a big deal to take that car out sure. and go on a camping trip with that vehicle. You, but that, you can hitch them. You can put a hitch yeah. on those, pull a small trailer with it. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Pretty They're neat, badass neat little rides. And yeah. you know, you can go up over a curb and do whatever it is with that vehicle. Yep. You do it the right way, exactly. the way they were designed to be exactly. And not, um, uh, uh, Japanify it. As, as you the don't want to like slam it and put a six foot wing on the back. I a, don't. A I little don't. buffalo that sounds like a herd of West Nile mosquitoes. Yeah. No. I, no. So I had, I had the, the basic WRX because right. I wanted to, I just always wanted one and wanted to try it. So sure. I had that. And then um, I got, that was like a 2017. And uh, and then when the lease came up, I got the, I got the one with the big fin, the, the, the right. stock one, sure. not like yeah. a weird one, yeah. but um, the, the WRX STI. And right. Nice I, cars. They I, are nice I, cars. I, I, was, I was very sad to trade yeah. that in to get my truck. Right. But the kids were getting into fishing and going out and right. stuff like that. So I was like. Was it the six speed or the automatic? I oh they no, no. They, they do, but you have to like no. It was they were both stick. Yeah, awesome. I grew up with stick ship. I had right. a, my first vehicle was an '89 carbur carbureted Wrangler. So, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah. Hey, just speaking on cars, I'm sure there's hundreds of cops to be listening to this. Do the same thing, but uh, I bought a, a heck. I've had a BMW 5 Series, and every time I pulled into work. At the mid-level agency I worked at, they're like, here's the drug dealer. But it was just a nice car, you yeah. know, and it was just, it was a family wagon, four-door. Yeah. And then after that, I, what did I buy? I bought a, it was a custom Jeep from Dallas, and it, and it everybody's like, that's the Bear Grylls edition. I couldn't just buy a Jeep Wrangler. Mm. It was a I didn't even realize rat. he had one. I, well, no, they just, people were calling it that because it was powder coated orange fenders and uh, just the winch on the front, the winch on the back. 35 uh, inch spare tire on the back as well. I just, yeah. I couldn't buy just a normal car. And my wife's always like, you're not happy with normal. When she met me, uh, I I'd just gone through a divorce and she was a dispatcher at that agency. Um, I was like, man, I, she's younger than me. I got to go get a, a hot car. And I was going <laughs> through a divorce, had zero money to do anything. Right. So I went to one of those tote the note places on, oh. on Belknap street and got it. It was a nice car. A buddy of mine worked as a manager there and actually gave me a good low mileage uh, Mustang GT. Because okay. a guy in my age back then, I think that was what, 32, uh, needed one of those. And it was a rag top. And then I was like, you know, I got my first tax return back of being a single again and making stupid decisions. I put Lamborghini doors on it, um, a speaker box in the back. It's like going back to high school again. <laughs> yeah. Darked out the That's lenses. That's what happens when kids have adult yes. money. Oh, yes, it is. It is. <laughs> That's 
but it was, uh, it was, it was absolutely ridiculous. It was the same year I played in uh, guns and hoses at Jerry's world. We actually got to do uh, full pads, full contact. We were the first team to do it. Okay. It was, it was a neat deal. And uh, we actually parked it on the front and my wife had it out there with the Lambo doors up. When you walk up, you think it's a Lamborghini for a minute. And mm-hmm. Anyway, it was a, That's it was a waste on of a money. Fucking Mustang. So, yeah. Hey, y'all, Eric Levine, two cops, one donut. I got to tell you about my new sponsor, Peregrine. Yeah, like the Falcon. Peregrine is an advanced data analytics platform for public safety. Peregrine builds technology that transforms the way people and entire organizations interact with their data for decision making and operations. The platform empowers department personnel to create and implement effective strategies, make informed decisions in critical moments, and protect their communities. Peregrine revolutionizes data integration by transforming, cleaning, and extracting meaningful connections between data from dozens of previously siloed systems. Its user-friendly tools, applications, and data visualizations enable personnel, from chiefs to investigators to analysts and patrol officers, to access crucial information and insights in the format, time frame, on the device, including mobile, that they require. Additionally, Peregrine delivers real-time, tailored insights and context to staff both in headquarters and in the field, allowing law enforcement officers to proactively address emerging situations stay ahead of potential threats, and make better long-term operational decisions that impact both officers and the communities they serve. Discover more at peregrine.io. That's P-E-R-E-G-R-I-N-E dot I-O. And make sure you tell them two cops, one donut sent you. On a Mustang. (laughs) Oh, my God. All right. Let's (laughs) get back on track here. Jesus. Um, I knew this was going to happen with you, too. I was like, <laughs> fuck, we're going to go down rabbit holes. It's fine. And I appreciate you saying hundreds of cops are going to listen to this. Oh, thing. yeah. That implies that I have hundreds of people that listen to my yes, podcast. Yes. So feel fancy. <laughs> um, no, uh, let's get into your career special. You had a 21-year career. Mm-hmm. I know you did all sorts of jobs, but sure. what is the one that you spe- you considered yourself the specialist in, and what did that entail? You know, the best. I guess the most memorable and the one I got the most contact on and became a mentor and almost an, I guess an entrepreneur and it was being a canine handler. Um, we, we got a new chief at that mid-level agency and I started Googling him, find out where he was from and, uh, wanted to find out his likes to see if any of my likes or what the department needs were running parallel together. So I, Basically, uh, presented made a video uh, back in 2002 with the antiquated technology and presented it to him. He actually liked it, presented it to city council, did a Homeland Security grant, got us the money, which basically was uh, for two dogs, two fully outfitted uh, canine vehicles, and for that specialized billet to, to have. It was a neat deal. And then he put the rules on the wall on what it took to become a canine officer. So I went in there and looked at it and I was like, well, shit, I don't qualify. Cause you had to have five years on the street, yada, yada, yada. And I'd had nine months. I oh. mean, I had worked at other, a couple other agencies before there as a reserve and whatever. Um, so I, I, I called the chief. I mean, I wasn't friends with him, but I had his number. It's a, not a huge agency. And, and, uh, I told him, I was like, man, I, I thought this would be open to everybody. He's like, well, no. He's like, no, you know what? I'm the chief. He's like, how long have you been here? It's like, well, nine, it'd be 10 months here in a few days. And he goes, okay. And he went down there, changed it to 10 months. He's the chief. He can do as he yeah, pleases. Yeah, he can do what he wants. But that, of course, in the eyes of the officers that I worked with. Alienated the shit out of him. Oh, my God. You want to talk about putting a target on your back? And, I, and I'm not talking about an actual, you know, somebody doing something. But it's just but you like did high the, school. You did, if I'm understanding you correctly, you did the legwork. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. To get this program. Grant, oh, did everything. Brought in the people. Him. Helped him find the, you know, all the, all, the, yeah. all the stuff. And and But then he did the right thing is he had an external board. And an internal board, and I, lucky enough, smoked them both, got okay. selected, uh, and then I did canine for nine years. But during that time, um, any agency in, in Tarrant County would call me out. So all the municipalities there, uh, a couple agencies in West Dallas, I'd be on call for, and the chief would allow me. It was a big PR tool. Yeah, allow me to go do it. My dog's name. You're gonna get a kick out of this, Mary Jane. So. <laughs> I was your Spider-Man fan. That it, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it was it was great to have Mary Jane and doing drug <laughs> drug interdiction and stuff like that. Having a guy knowing he's going to prison for a very long time. What's your dog's name? Mary Jane. He's like, oh, shit. Yep. Mary Jane's putting me in prison. Yep. <laughs> but uh, 
it, it, it was a neat thing. My first dog in training was named Bruno. And you see that little ah, scar okay. there. That was the first day of training. Yeah. He was a Belgian Malinois, literally on steroids, I'm pretty sure. And uh, he ate my lunch, put me in uh, JPS hospital, then transferred over to, to Harris once I was stable. And um, Okay. Did he, uh, did he get removed from the street after that? or He did. And then I found out that the guy that he bit before me lost his arm from the elbow down. Uh, but yeah, so Dang, that's a good bite. It, it is. It, uh, it broke the radius of the Ona and I finished out training in a sling and that's Holy where Mary Jane came into shit. I was a little, little dog shy. You know, okay. if a poodle will come around the corner, I was drawn down on it. And, you know, it's just one of those, yeah, it was almost like a PTS event. I hate saying the D on the end of that. I just like to say PTS, but yeah, I've had a few guys on, yeah. they, they, they say PTS. I, they say PTS. They mm-hmm. say some say PTSD just because it's what we kind of we're indoctrinated with. Sure. Um, and uh, I use PTSD just because hashtag wise, it's the easiest to find yes, and yes. gets the most people to look. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Um, all right, let's go down the canine rank, uh, okay. line. Uh, canine options. Let's go mm-hmm. that route first. I have had a couple canine sure. guys on first, but we haven't gone down this route. Um, I think right now the probably the still most popular one that people know of is is a German Shepherd. Mm-hmm. So the Belgian is is the, probably the next one, but people don't understand what a Belgian is. Sure, and everybody wants one for a pet. So I want you to go down that road, um, <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, kind of give the options and tell what each dog is strong in. Okay, I'll do that. First of all, I'm going to talk about the smells and a dog's nose and. Majority of people will know, obviously, that they can smell a lot. But if you were to take the the mucous membrane, I don't I hate to get technical, inside a dog's nose and were to unravel it, well, first off, do a human's nose. So if you do a human, a medical doctor told me if you unravel it, basically it would come from the front of the nose. You could wrap it around to the back of about the middle of the head on a cadaver, and that's about how long it is. And that's our smell receptors that we have. But if you take a dog, it's the entire length of his body. So their smell, I mean, that's the biggest sense that a dog has is its nose. And it's amazing what they can do. Uh, Personally, I had a a, uh, black Labrador was my dog, Mary Jane. But before that, the one that uh, bit me, being a Belgian Malinois, is a very high-driven dog. They, it's almost like a a cattle dog. Um, They... You know, there's a guy on TV that tells you you need to walk your dog at least twice. You better have a big area for a mouth. Mouths have to have more water, more playtime. Otherwise, they are going to absolutely destroy, not all of them, but the majority of them will destroy their environment if they don't get that out. So Malinois, I don't suggest, but I'm not the world's leader at it as a family pet. Um Every canine handler I know says yes. that same thing. Yes. I mean, they're great. Trained dog, working dogs, they are outstanding. If I had a Malinois at home as a pet, I probably wouldn't have a job because I'd be at home watching the dog to make sure it wasn't eating the neighbor. It's not <laughs> eating, eating the my couch. other dog. Yes, eating yeah. the couch. Again, great working dog. German Shepherds, dual purpose. And, and for the canine guys listening, I'm not talking about dual purpose in our in our work. But they are, they can be a good family dog as long as the breeding is correct. Um, But they're also a great police dog. Hip dysplasia will come in a little bit earlier on them, meaning the the hip problems when they start getting older. So that's what I worry about when you get a family dog at about, you know, eight to 10 years, they're going to get that hip dysplasia and you're going to be helping them up in the car, helping them up on the couch. And it's kind of sad. It's kind of having a a, a geriatric dog because they are getting older. Yeah. But I, I hate to see that. There's some things you can give them. A vet would be able to answer that better, but they're great. Now, a lab, other than leaving a uh, blanket of carpet in your house every day uh, from the from the hair that's coming off of them, great dog, loving dog. Uh, my dog, Mary Jane, even after she retired, if I was just getting my uniform on to go to patrol, she would be literally jumping up in the air and twisting, thinking that maybe it's this time, time if I get his attention, yeah. I'll be able to go with him. And she was with me for a typical dog handler gets five to seven years with their animal. Mine was almost nine years with me on the street. Damn. So she was with me everywhere. I lived in North Tarrant County at the time. I would go to Kroger and the dog came with me. Everybody knew the dog. Um, 
Everybody knew Mary Jane. She was a great PR tool. She went to most of the elementary schools in the, in the large cities and the small cities around here just for people to see. Didn't have to put a muzzle on her. Like, we took my yeah. partner's dog in there. His name was Bruno. This is the dog when, when World War Three breaks out that you want with you to protect you until the end. Bruno is the badass, right? Yeah. And he leaves scars like this on people. Um, we take him into a school and make him look like Hannibal Lecter. You're putting that big thing on him, and, and, and kids look at him, and they're like, oh, my God. Yeah. And then just even the steel <laughs> on the end of that thing, if he got excited and hit somebody, I mean, you're going to have a bruise on your arm for a week. I mean, he was a missile. Yeah. But, uh, but a missile. great dog. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully I covered that question a little bit. Okay. So are there any other dogs that you typically see out there? I have seen uh, more, and I own mm-hmm. one, a, mm-hmm. a German short hair pointer. Mm-hmm. I've been seeing those a lot sure. lately. Dutch Shepherd. Okay. Uh, Dutch Shepherd is another. So a Dutch Shepherd was my filler dog between the dog that bit me and Mary Jane and range day. I'm, now keep in mind, I'm in a sling. I've got this new dog that I don't know that wants to bite everything. Still know nothing about canine. And we, uh, we had this range and uh, on the North side of, uh, of the city that we went to. It was just an outside little dirt berm range. And, uh, this dog suffered some type of blood disorder and breathing problem so it was after the first shot and i recalled my dogs it was like oh and then it started hyperventilating fell over basically started dying in front of me and i didn't know what to do and it's my quote-unquote partner i haven't really worked through the dog in the back of the car ran up to a, a vet clinic up on north beach and and uh, they brought the dog back they did some blood tests they basically said banning your, your your dog's not fit with the problems it's going to have for canines you have to do something i'm like Still recovering from this dog bite. Now, I was like, is this a sign? God, are you, are you trying to tell me <laughs> yeah. that I don't need to be a canine officer? And so that night, I had my partner who just retired, um, came over, and uh, our canine main guy, and I know he won't mind if I say his name. His name's Gerald Goss. He's one of the best in the industry for training dogs. Uh, came to my house with uh, my buddy Tom Myers, came over, and... Uh, I think my lieutenant or captain, one of them came over. I was, I was sitting on the couch, pain pills, arm was killing me. They basically gave me an option. They're like, you can go back to patrol if you want, or you can allow us a week to get you a dog that's going to come in from Las Vegas from the DEA. Um, they've got one dog too many. They started doing a little bit of imprinting work on the dog, but it's going to be right where you're at, you need to be right now in your training to be able to get you back in. Would you like to do that? And I'm like, I want to be a canine handler. Yeah. If we don't do, or if this doesn't work, that'll be strike three. I'll go back to patrol. We'll still love every day. And that's what happened. So they, they shipped this dog in. Now, I told you if a little poodle came out, I was a little getting on him with a gun. You know, I was nervous around dogs because, I mean, this was a, a big event to me. Yeah. Gerald took me out to the airport, DFW airport. And uh, we had access to go onto the tarmac over where they did, I think it was maintenance on the jets and unloading packages and stuff. Well, I'm in an old Crown Vic with the old Vector light bars, uh, and this this crate starts coming down off this American Airlines jet, and it's a big green crate. I remember it like it was yesterday. And as it's coming down that electric belt, it's just going raw, and the whole crate's shaking. And I'm like, "Fuck this!" <laughs> I got up on the hood of my car, and I'm yeah. a big guy, so it's like, Gunk. "Yeah, I'm standing on the hood of my." Gerald's like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, I, what the hell did you order, dude? I, you know, I said, I, my arms, I, I don't need two arms like that. That thing's probably gonna rip my neck off. And he's like, and he's a Marine. He's like, stop, man, I'm pussy, man, come here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he, he grabbed his tennis ball and, uh, he, he popped the crate on that thing and this black bullet just comes out and she's licking and barking and jumping. And I'm like, that's like one of those Frisbee dogs. I mean, that's a, that's yeah. a, you know, it's not a killer. That's a man, are people going to look at me weird because I don't have a, a mean, mean dog? Right. I didn't know what to expect. He's like, dude, this is going to be the best tracking dog. This is going to be the best article recovery for crime scene dog and the best dope dog that you'll ever see. I said, man, I'll take your word for it. I got down. I mean, she licked me. I mean, she, I didn't keep her in an outside crate, man. That dog slept inside in a crate. I mean, was treated like royalty the whole time. Family loved her. The city loved her. But yeah, man, it was, it was a great dog. Um, so with dogs, there's a misconception. People think that, um, well, first, what types of dogs are there? There's obviously drug dogs. Sure. Okay. So what are the different types of dogs? 
So you have uh, dual purposes, what you're going to hear a lot uh, in the canine world. So you have a narcotics detection dog. You have an explosive detection dog. And the demeanors of both dogs have to meet a certain threshold before you'll even try to imprint them on the, on the dope. So if you look at a, and I have not personally ever had a explosive detection dog. A lot of friends that did trained with them, set out their, their fines for them. An explosive detection dog looks like a dog that's kind of on Xanax. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a, the, the GSP. She's yeah. a failed. Oh, okay. She's a failed, uh, right. explosive dog. And, and after they retire, they're actually really good for, uh, going to the hospitals. They're just calm, do that type of yeah. thing. Um, they just have to be really, and you don't basically you don't want that thing to set off a bomb while you're for, so they have to be slow, methodical, sniff, move, sniff. When you get a dope dog like Mary Jane, my dog, and you tell her to find it, it's like it's yeah. like they're on speed, and and literally she would just haul ass around lockers, boom, find the scent, pop, sit down, waiting for the freaking toy to pop out. I mean, just high drive for dope. Low drive for, for explosives. Okay. And then you have, uh, for the dual purpose, you can either put in tracking in there or bite work. And then you have find and bite and uh, bark and hold. So find and bite, and there's a lot of agencies around here that, that had that in the early 2000s. Then they went to bark and hold because it was a uh, p- patrol officer come up, find a broken window, alarm goes off as he gets there. Like, Man, they're in there right now. Uh, send canine over here. Canine guy would throw the little booties on for the glass and the dog, and yeah, you know, whatever agency, police canine, come out now or release the dog. You will be bit. Ah, oh, they're not answering. Do it again. Same announcement. No, you just say Reaver. Send the dog in there, and that dog knows he's going to go in this building, and whoever he finds, he gets to lock onto and wait for Daddy to come up and tell him he's done a good job. So, on one of those instances in these medium cities, um, not the dog handler's fault. It's how he was trained sent him in there and it was a maintenance guy. The maintenance guy's wife showed up, was upset at him, took a chair, threw it out the window and then came back in there and yelled at him and patrol officer, motivated patrol officer, saw this, called canine, followed procedure, surrounded the building, launched the dog in. Maintenance guy gets lit up. Oh no. So maybe we need to do something different. Um, speaking a different language from announcing better or do a, uh, what I say, bark and hold, uh, find an alert. So you want the dog to come in there, find the person, stare at the person, start jumping up and barking and alerting the handler. I've got something in here. I need you to come tell me if I'm supposed to bite it or you're just going to take him away in, in handcuffs. Uh, so that's what most agencies have gone to now. Okay. And that's the liability on the department lowers, the vicarious liability on the officer lowers. Okay. So that makes sense. They, uh, I'd always hear these instructors and judges, and when I say judge, it's not a judge in a courtroom. It's a judge signing off on the paperwork that this dog is certified for another year. So they would always remind them at the end of, of that training or certification time, for every second that your dog does not let go, it's $10,000 out of your pocket. So an example, uh, if my partner were to release Bruno and if he were to bite somebody, and then once Tom would go over there and get control, if Tom would say, Bruno, out, real loud, that's, that's the one you're allowed in, in the courtroom, civil court now, and he should let go immediately, and then you can render first aid, take him into custody, that type of thing. But if it's, Bruno, out, Bruno, out, and then you're having to apply electricity to the dog or whatever, he's not letting go, it's 1,001, 1,000, you get to 1,003, that's three grand out of the officer's pocket for vicarious liability let alone what they're going to sue the department for. So that's just kind of the lawsuits that have been going around the United States. So you can see a very highly trained listening dog is the best one to have. And why a lot of chiefs and commanders look at a canine is a little bit of a liability. Yeah. But if you are a highly trained dog, they are an asset like you would not believe because of the nose. So. Okay. So explain what you see happening. We've seen videos and they're, they're usually blooper videos mm-hmm. that we like to call them where you'll see the canine and you're like, you know, you know, <laughs> whatever the dog Biff, go get them. Mm-hmm. And they go and they run and they, they're running next to them. Yep. They're looking and they, yep. they ain't biting shit. Good. <laughs> what is going on? So in my training and experience, that's called equipment fixation. So 
we had the agency that I did and Gerald Goss being our trainer and almost like a freaking dog psychologist understood when you wear that, everybody's seen it on TV, the big bite suits, big mm-hmm. blue or big orange suit. The dog sees the suit. He's like, Oh it's yeah. Time. Yeah. It's time. That's my snicker. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to bite into that thing. <laughs> and uh, that's his big treat or the big bite sleeve, right? You get yeah. the big, you know, it's, it looks like a rawhide chew thing and it keeps you from getting punctured. There's a thing called hidden sleeves. It's a much, it's kind of like over the years, our vests have gotten thinner, lighter. Well, they've, they figured out technology to where you're going to feel the pressure of the dog, but the teeth aren't going to come through. That's a hidden sleeve. So once a week I would have to put on a hidden sleeve or we'd have to get volunteers that were voluntold to come out and train with us. We'd be very careful uh, because some of our dogs that we worked with were cheater dogs. And I'll, I'll go into that in a second. Um, We don't want them equipment fixated. It's okay to keep their drive up and you're going to do a few, uh, letting them get out what's called their loft idle motion, get out their, their aggression by biting that suit. And that's a little rubber band that winds up in their head and they have to release that. And I'll, I'll go into that in a second. Um, but to do a hidden sleeve and put a bad guy that this dog's never dealt with in training in a warehouse, create the fake broken window and sit in that, in that dog's mind, this is the real deal. I'm going in there. And if they find that person and that person does an aggressive act and it doesn't engage like it's supposed to, you got a big problem. Yeah. You know, that guy could kill the dog. That dog may freak out, run out, and then officer goes in, then he, you know, the dog didn't do his job. So the tool's not working properly. So we got to go back to square one, figure out what's going on with the dog psychology wise. And that's a big reason that these judges and trainers, when they go select a dog, will put on hidden sleeves or a big suit, a fake knife, and they'll put the dog in a field and get the dog to turn around. And when they they see the guy, he'll come at him with a knife. If that dog doesn't engage and kind of cowers, runs away, that dog's not going to police work. Uh They've got to be able to kind of like law enforcement and and firefighters, we got to run towards danger, right? Right. If that dog's not going to run towards the danger, it's not going to be a part of. Now, these are proper there's a lot of canine organizations out there that i don't believe have any business being in the game and it's a small world out there for canine i'm not going to say any names but there's some of them out there that are just in it for the money and there's a lot of money to be had in that but yeah you've got to be the right person training the right person selecting and the right person finding the right officer to put with a dog you know and that's a big big job in itself too damn okay yeah Yeah. i see those videos and i'm just cringing i'm like Bro, either you didn't train enough with your dog, mm. like you, or you missed some cues. Because I would be so pissed if I'm out there and my dog fails to bite yep. when you need him to bite. Exactly. Oh, that drive me crazy. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, and this is for citizens out there because I've sure. seen videos like that dog didn't bark. He didn't alert. He didn't. You you making it up? Sure. We don't train dogs. You tell me if I'm mm-hmm. correct in this. We don't train dogs to bark when they find stuff necessarily. Right. We train them to either so sit. You, or... So you're fine. You're, you're talking about like a, a traffic stop. Yes. They've, they've asked them to get out of the car for whatever legal reasons. And, that, and that's been, that's been met. Now the dog shows up or he may be a canine handler already. And he's doing conducting what's called a free air sniff around the vehicle. The dog goes around the vehicle and he does something that they didn't catch. And the canine handler comes back and he's like, just to let you know, the dog's indicated on your car. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, per the Fourth Amendment, now I have a reason to enter your vehicle without a warrant. So now I'm going to enter your vehicle. And yes, and I've seen that over the years. People are very upset. Uh, they get they get upset and they don't want to 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 play anymore and they just want yeah. to go home. But you know, my dog, it may just have been my badass instructor that I have. You knew when she indicated, and we trained every Wednesday. A lot of the times we'd train with the larger agency here in this area uh, and and all their dogs. And then we'd come over to another large and we'd all train together. Even though we didn't have the same licenses, we're all doing the same thing. It's a lot funner and better for somebody else putting out your hides and you can log everything down and everything's legit. And that's the best way to do it. But what my dog would do now, you have what's called an aggressive indication for narcotics and you have a passive indication. My dog was passive. But she was visually passive. Anybody would say, that's a change in behavior. And that's what you need. Um, <clears throat> so Mary Jane would go around a car in a free air sniff. And I could go into the, you go into a free air sniff and then you turn her back around. It's called a detail. That's where they're following the finger. Then you turn back around for an extreme detail. 
And uh, on the extreme detail, if I was on pass three, I'm, if dog's not coming in anything, dog's not coming in anything. Y'all have a great day. You're free to go. Once his officer writes you a warning citation, whatever he's going to do with you, arrest you for no license plate light, whatever. My job's done. But if it indicates, they see. So if my dog would indicate, Mary Jane would sit down, then she would look back at the source. She would look at me to make sure, and then she would look back at the source, then she would touch it with her nose. Yeah. It's like, motherfucker, it's yeah, here. She's like, here, it's here. And <laughs> me personally, I was trained, you don't ever award or reward on scene. We reward on training days. We reward on the off time. But when you're out in the field, just what's called PSP certification, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's globally, not just Texas. Uh, you rewarded in training, not on the scene. Because you don't want to correlate the yep. finding something yep. with the treat. Yes. Because otherwise, now she'll get false positives. Right. And because she just wants to treat. Yes. Because dogs are and smart. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's an issue. Yeah. And it's not necessarily the canine handler. It's the way they were trained. Trained, yeah. Um, there's, there's a lot of bad teams out there, just like there's a very, very small percentage of bad cops out there. Yeah. And it's, like I said, it's not necessarily their fault, but they, they need to start identifying that, retraining the dog yep. and, and fixing it because that dog is superseding a search warrant. Dude, yeah. if you're friggin', I mean, the, the fourth amendment's one of the best amendments out there. I think mm -hmm. you would agree with that. And if I, I'm, I'm not a believer in violating that, I mean, it protects me, it protects my family. Yeah. You know, uncle Sam's not going to come in unless they're, you know, probable yeah. cause they're writing a warrant yada, yada, yada. So I'm a big believer in protecting people's freaking yeah. amendments out there. And I think 99.9% .9 of police officers are. Yeah. And we get, okay. We get caught up. We've been doing the job. You, you, you know, the, the worst offenders I think are the five to seven year guys. They, they've got it under their wing. You know, they, they know the job now and they start to get either cynical or, or complacent and, right. or they, there's rushing calls and stuff like that. And then that's when the fourth, uh, amendment yes. stuff starts to get slipped on and uh i think it's always good to sit down you know whether it's a roll call or whatever it is and and remind your your guys hey we hold the ultimate power mm -hmm. we can take somebody's freedom away at the drop of a hat that's right and you can't forget that yep. it's 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 a it's an awesome power to have but you, you you need to be aware of yep. it all the time. You need to be reminded that you have that all the time, not to stroke your ego, sure. but to keep you in check. Exactly. And I, I'm, I'm big into that. And it's one of the reasons I do this is because I, as much as I wanted to help citizens sure. get educated in what we do, which is kind of why I'm asking these questions, but the stuff I'm asking you, I don't know the answers to on a lot right. of it. So right. for me, I'm getting educated too. So I've found through this podcast, I've gotten, I've educated a lot of cops and shit. Sure. Um, I had a SWAT guy on and I had guys like, man, I was thinking about putting in for SWAT, but after listening to that, no, fuck that. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Like, you're, you're marrying that division when you go to it. And that's yeah. okay. If you're the, if you're the guy for the job, as long as you don't have a family anyway. Yeah, yeah. But those guys are hard chargers. I love them. We, you know, we, we need them. Uh, I yeah. did, I did what's uh, equal to in the Marine Corps. So I yeah. get it. I, I, I want the guys that want to do that yes. to be there. Cause yes. I don't want to do no. that. At no. all, I, I wouldn't mind being a leader in such. Sure, but I also think it's unfair to be a leader in something I've never done. Exactly. So exactly. Um, and but, I've I've talked to other guys that have led SWAT teams, and they're like, I never did SWAT, but when I got there, I took the time, I learned what they learned, um, and and now the their reflection on it was that you can do that job without having done it. Sure, but you got to yeah. put the work in. And so it, it, can I take uh, one minute out and talk about dogs again? Yeah. 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 Okay? yeah. Oh, we're uh, still on dogs. Okay. I just, we so, just, that's called a rabbit hole, sir. We go down those. Yes. So like I said, Gerald Goss was an amazing instructor. Uh, our, our program, our training program was 17 weeks, six okay. days a week, 14, sometimes 16 hours a day and a big test and an evaluation at the end. Most dog handlers and I'm speaking to the administrators out there when you're when you're sending your canine teams out or your 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 administrators will come to you saying I found a good canine place to go train select and yada 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 sometimes they do it in-house not very often but big agencies some big agencies do but a lot of times if you've got just a three-week program or just a four-week program and you think you're going to pair a dog up and go out for a five to seven year stint with no issues yeah it's not enough time it's just that's like 
you're going to start police training tomorrow and next Friday you're going to graduate and you're going to go out and you have to go in a bed. That's essentially doing that. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's one thing I want to talk about is make sure you select the right schools. Don't just look at what's called NADA for narcotics. Um, look into big things like PSP and I can't even say the word. So it's so long, but if you just type in PSP canine on Google, it'll pull up the standards and it is amazing. Like I said, it's globally recognized. Okay. Things like Schutzen and there's a lot, you know, big words out there, but, uh, they're just an amazing, amazing, amazing organization. But going back to, to dogs, even neighborhood dogs, and this is kind of for people to understand, there's so many civil lawsuits going around because Bubba Smith down the street and just a hypothetical name has a German shepherd in the backyard. He's always been the neighbor's pet, never hurt anybody. He could have visitors come over and he loves on them, licks on them, yada, yada, yada. Well, now the German shepherd, Bido's in the backyard and he's got a six foot fence like everybody else and there's an alley behind the house. And he's out there, he just let him out there for a break to, to pee or whatever he needs to do. Fido jumps over the fence, bites the eight year old kid, bouncing the basketball going through the yard. And this is a shock, it's a shock from the, the neighborhood officer that comes on scene to take the report, animal controls like your dogs. What happened? And they don't know. And I can understand why they don't. I mean, it's a dog. It's not a human. You don't understand why they do these things. But there's a gentleman out there, and his last name is Lear, and it's called Learloff Idle Motion. So this was a very intriguing part of my training, and I actually, I was like, man, this is really neat, and I wanted to do some uh, uh, more studying onto it, and I looked into it, and this guy, before he passed, used to go and speak for a nominal sum and explain the psychology behind why Fido bit and he's never bit anybody before. And that's, we're always worried if we got big breed dog, man, if I have kids come over. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, it's just a thing. So, and you can practice this with a laser pointer, a taser point, whatever you have available to you. Yeah. <laughs> How you do with cats, you know, just joking yeah. around, but I, you know, a little laser pointer, but, uh, or a bouncing ball. And so Learloff idle motion and the best way to break it down is, the excited part of your brain, uh, for humans, uh, a lot of people will put dope on it or, you know, to get that, that, that rush, right. Yeah. The endorphins and everything else or, or alcohol or tobacco or, or whatnot. Well, dogs obviously don't do any of that, but they have what's called Learloff idle motion. So it's a constant moving object. Okay. And, uh, kind of like HGN, right. We're, we're, we're checking eyes. Yeah. So a constant moving object, you got little Billy out there bouncing the ball, coming through the aisle. He's being a kid. He's outside. He doesn't have a phone in his hand. And by God, let him be a kid. Boom, 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 bouncing that ball, coming down the alley. Fido jumps the fence, bites little Billy. But going into dog psychology of it, he's not trying to bite little Billy. He's trying to bite the ball. The ball is aggravating, not in a mean way. It's winding up the rubber band. It's head. Yeah, yeah, boom. Boom, boom, and now we've reached a threshold or max. So he's got to bite something. You'll see they've done video studies on this to where the dog doesn't have, he can't get through the fence. He'll bite himself. He'll bite the fence and snap a panel in half, and then he's fine. It releases that rubber band. Wow. So Learloff idle motion is the study of that. So you may have the best trained dog in the world, and he freaking just bit somebody, and it was a jugular bite, and like, it's horrible. Are you still liable? Yes, but the courts need to understand that's why it happens. And they could do their own studies, look at their own experts and find out, but it's Learloff idle motion. When I found that out and went down the rabbit hole, I was up till, started at eight at night and 4 a.m. I was done printing out my last thing on it and I was just, I was in, in shock. Mm -hmm. I mean, it happens all over the country, but maybe 1% of the courts have been introduced to Learloff idle motion on it. But dog uh -huh. owners need to know this yeah. and try to eliminate that type of thing slats to where dogs can't see through, you know, nothing that's going to get that, that yeah. bouncing effect, and, huh. you, you know? So, and I'm going to talk about Tom again. He's such a good canine handler. When we first got these dogs, his dog was named Bruno. The city told us they were going to come out and build these kennels and we got selected for it. And then they said, actually, here's a credit card. You're going to build the kennels. I said, well, I've never done concrete work. There's a YouTube video for that. Okay. Well, why aren't y'all? Well, y'all don't live in the city limits and we're not insured to send a city crew out there to build it. So Tom and I learned how to do concrete from YouTube and built our own kennels. <laughs> okay. And uh, 
So the kennel that we built Tom was one that you go to tractor supply, like the cheapest eight by 10 kennel. We didn't even know how to set stuff in concrete. So we just had wet concrete in there, pulled it down into the wetness and let it dry. Hey, that's, that's our kennel, right? It. And it's, and it's a, and I'm definitely not a maintenance guy. I can break anything though. Um, and it's, it's a flimsy chain link fence and I'm putting a $22,000 weapon in there. That's what these dogs cost. I mean, they're so yeah. expensive. That's before training. Put this dog in there, and then his son, I think at the time was nine or ten years old, they had a little half basketball court in their backyard. Tom is in there being a good husband and off-duty patrol officer doing dishes, looking out the window at his dog that we're still in training for and looking out his son playing basketball. Bounce, 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 bounce. See Bruno back up and charges the fence, goes through that freaking door. I mean, it broke the everything on it. And now he's full, look like a greyhound running across the yard and he's about to go after the ball, but it probably would have been his son because mm-hmm. that's the motion doing it. Tom was able to either whip, I can't remember if he whipped the window open or opened that back screen door and off, disengaged. We just got done working on that the day before. Oh. So the dog's in the air, ah, comes out like this, off, closes his mouth, feet come up, comes in like, like a landing without a landing gear and disengages and looks at Tom. That's good. Yeah. I mean, it was great. And he's like, <laughs> here recalled him over to him but that could have been a bad day i mean you see what the dog did to an adult yeah imagine a child you know shit so he called me told me everything i was actually on duty at the time your kettle sucks ass so i I actually came over there to him and uh so we did we came back to the drawing board and got online (laughs) rebar yes there we go oh (laughs) man let me tell you we so it's it's probably the dude sold the house years ago but that thing's probably like on the deed now because you're not moving that thing the one that we created out there so sorry that was my last little canine no that's fine like like people love the canine shit. Yes, you absolutely. know that. I mean, you look at, you know, I follow a lot of law enforcement people. Right. And every, especially if you're a female canine officer. Yep. I mean, their stuff blows up. People love to hear about it. They yep. love to hear people, you know, unique because it's a male dominated field. So if it you get is. a female in an even rarer part of that career field, it's, it's just it's always newsworthy. It is. So um, I like seeing that stuff. Uh, one of my friends, uh, Lindsay Stewart, shout out. She's a canine handler for, for us, does dope and whatnot. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and I think she's got a GSP. I could be wrong on that. Mm-hmm. I think she's got a GSP as well. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I, I like, you know, I had a, one of my buddies from the Air Force. Um, he has a very successful canine training business now. Bellum Canine is what it's called. It's mm. in Texas. Um, uh, he got a uh, government contract in a, another country mm-hmm. at one point, and that's what kind of put him on the map. But, sure. Um, he got his lunch ate, though. When really? he went, like, he was so, he'd tell you. He's like, I was in it over my head. Like, yes. I, he's like, but I faked it till I made it and, and, and got it done. You have to. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I know the work. He's like, that wasn't the question. He's like, it was the business side I didn't know. And so he goes over, severely undersells himself. Um, still makes great money, but sure. severely undersold himself, Man. which is why he got the contract. Right. And uh, come back, and he learned a lot from it. So we went down that. We didn't get to talk about the meat and potatoes about sure. The canine sure. stuff. So I was like, well, fuck, right. why? well, if that's your specialty, let's go down the stuff that I know people like to exactly. know about. They want to know the type of dogs that are out there. They want to know the, the signaling, um, the false positive stuff. That's sure. been a big one. I've actually watched, there's a YouTube video of, a, we talked about mm-hmm. the, the officers that, you know, mm-hmm. make a bad name for us. Right. They, they're, they're making, they're making their dog signal. You can sure. see them doing it. And I'm right. like, what the fuck? Um, I shouldn't say they, this one in yes. particular guy. Yes. Um, be very clear about that and uh he got busted rightfully so well and and those type of guys i mean it's uh, i'm all you know if i have some extra time i'll go down the 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 rabbit hole on youtube and and some people call them the first amendment but whatever auditors auditors but there's some very educational videos out there for young police officers so um when i went to the rural area that i'm at now um let's just say I was assisting another agency that's not in our area, but it's borderline. And I, and he was a high ranking Lieutenant and we went to, to assist at this building. It was basically a custody. We always go to these custody deals. And he basically 
I was trying to throw his weight around. Badge heavy, I guess, is what it is. We're just there for scene security to help. And it was one of those things. Uh, the, the, the kid, I'm going to say it's a 25-year-old dad, uh, s- small, scrawny guy. And the lieutenant starts yelling at him, barking, this is what you're going to do, and this is how you're going to treat your X, Y. And did this is, and he gets his phone out, and he starts recording them, and he's like, and, but he's sincerely doing it to remember, because he didn't have a notepad. This guy's giving him instruction. He's a little guy, and he's like, puts that up, and that dude snatches the phone, and he goes, you have to have my permission to video. Keep in mind, we're in a public place, okay? Me, personally, I would like on a traffic stop, a drone in the air, my body camera. I want them to record me, but get my good side. Right. I have less gray in the beard over here. Yeah. Um, you got to get the scar in there. That's right. That's right. You know, it's it's yeah. not exactly a war thing. They're like, you're a Marine. You got that. What yeah. happened overseas? I was like, man, I was never overseas. That's, that's from police work, you know, and it's yeah. not even a cool call as a training deal. I, I actually had, got a purple heart from that. I had a trait when I was a baby. Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so... I, I would tell rookies and stuff like, oh, what happened to your throat? And I'm like, I got shot in the line yeah. of duty. And they're like, what? <laughs> oh, I was my like, God. yeah, I just kept pressing on, though. Right, right. You know? <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus. Jesus. But, uh, so, yeah, so he's, he snatched the phone out of his hand. He, he snatched the phone out of yeah. his hand, and you can't video me without my, you know. So what are we supposed to do as, as officers on scene? I don't outrank the guy. I don't, I don't even work for the guy's yeah, agency. But that's a training issue. It is. So that's I walk major. up and I was like, hey, Lieutenant, with all due respect, can I talk to you for a second? Gave the guy his phone back. Don't you record me. Walks away. And I look back at the guy. I was like, dude, if you want to record, you can. And this lieutenant's face just got red. I was like, dude, come here. I mean, you look like you're about to pop a vessel. Come over Yeah. Here. And that's our and, job. And this dude doesn't know me from Adam. Yeah. But I was like, hey. And then he looks at me and he goes, I'm recording, so don't tell me anything illegal. And I'm like, I'm about to tell you. Something legal. <laughs> that he can actually record you, and I know it may hurt your feelings. Yeah. And I don't know if somebody's taking your TCO test for you during legislative updates. <laughs> and boy, his face just got really long. Yeah. I was yeah. like, but he can record you all day long. And I said, if you take it, you might as well go tell your sheriff or whoever your boss is that you're about to write a check. Yeah. Do never. You don't ever take these people's phones no. man just let uh-uh. them i have let them record i have made it a part of my speech now yes. that i will when i make contact with we'll say hey um, you know officer levine reason we're making contact right now they got you know you got a warrant we're coming over for this um while i'm talking feel free get your phone out start recording right. and i make it a part of what i'm doing because when i go to court guess what they're gonna see man the officer told them to start recording yes and it just, it, it's just a pro tip guys, yep. uh, where I do get concerned is phone calls. You don't get to make a phone call yep. while I'm on scene. Right. And I, and I back you on that yeah. because I've had a couple instances when mama come get well, <laughs> 2004, you got a whole fucking crowd 2005 show iPhone shows up, people were texting more this and that. Mm-hmm. So I won't, I'm like, Hey dude, if you want to video me, have at it. If you want to, and I've even gone down this road get mama on the phone and FaceTime me yeah. and she can screen record, have at it. But during the course of this investigation, you're not going to text anybody. You're not going to call anybody. That's for your safety. And that's for my safety. Yeah. Because if somebody comes and tries to hurt me, you may get hurt in defense. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to let that happen. Yep. And that usually, if you explain it correctly, they're going to respect you for it. Yeah. There's a lot of people around here, uh, around the United States that says, Man, that cop is such an asshole. Man, he is such not me, but they're describing. No, they're talking one, about you. One, yeah, they could yeah. be. <laughs> uh, one one officer or deputy, and uh, usually there's a reason they're calling him that. Yeah, you know, and and I, I'm sure I may have been called that once or twice in my career. But if you look at my jacket, professional wise, I don't get that type of complaint because I exercise people. I, I want to make sure the rights aren't broken. Mm-hmm. If you can't arrest somebody the right way. Yeah. You got no business having that badge on, man. And it's and you, you've been in long enough to know that there, you you've seen some things out mm-hmm. there. And I've had to blow people. On, hey, dude, you can't do that. F you, man. It's the thick blue line. You're not gonna say. I already made the phone call, brother. Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah. So I'm already writing a supplement. Yeah. I hope yours is truthful and correct. You yeah. know that type of thing. And we just don't need that in this business. Mm-hmm. We already got enough other stuff going on. We've got to yeah. do it the right way. And the thing is, is you hear that all the time. Oh, thin blue line, man, cops would be great if they just held each other accountable. The problem I have with that statement is you do not know how often we do hold each yes. other accountable. It's just not put out there. You yeah. don't see it. No. In my department alone, 
every year I have been on, somebody has been fired or charged yep. every year. Absolutely. It's 12 years. Yep. Um, so you can't tell me, you can't tell me, at least in my fishbowl, sure. I can't speak for everybody, but in my fishbowl that we don't hold each other accountable because oh, yeah. we do. And the other part of holding each other accountable is I'm going to hold somebody accountable at the same level that I'm going to hold a civilian accountable. I pulled over a UPS guy one time, maybe been borderline on how much he had to drink. He mm-hmm. wasn't driving a UPS truck, but that's his career. If I nail him with a DWI, He's his career's good. done. Yep. And that's where discretion comes in. So I could use it. I, I wasn't a felony. I didn't have to arrest this guy. I used the totality of the circumstances sure. I had available, and I gave this guy a break. He was right around the corner from his house, too. Mm-hmm. And I verified, that, you know, I did my sure. due diligence yeah. and everything. But um, I was a young officer, but it was one of those moments in my career. I was actually very happy with what I did. Right. And um, even that guy found me a couple of weeks later. It took him a while. He couldn't figure out who, who, who pulled him over sure. and uh, came, found me, thanked me. And um, he's like, man, he's like, I just we, we had a holiday party with family. He's like, I had dropped off my girlfriend. And he's like, I thought it was good. He's like, apparently I wasn't. Sure. He's like, but he's like, it opened my eyes oh, yeah. at, you know, just how little it takes sometimes. Oh, yeah. So, um, but the point I'm getting to is the discretion that I use for another officer is also going to be the same discretion I use for people. And if you can live that line, it's really not that hard. It's an easy game. But when you walk that line for just one side and you don't do it for the other, that's where you really start to become imbalance yep i think absolutely uh, as a cop and how do you explain that to the public right because yes if i pull my mom over i'm not giving my mom a ticket mm-hmm. straight up i'm not giving my mom unless she did something really stupid right but you know if it's just speeding but again based on your attitude how you treat me and your record like i'm not gonna give you a ticket either oh, yeah. it has nothing to do with who the person if it's a cop Exactly. But if he does something egregious, like, you know, flying through a school zone, there's a video I just posted recently right. of a guy going 80 miles an hour and a 45 <sighs> on his way to work in a patrol car. I saw that video. Yeah. So he, he pulled him over in the patrol car. Yeah, the sheriff the dude, pulls him over. Yes. And then the dude gets out and he's like, dude, I'm on my way to work. What is it? Why are you, why yeah. am I dressed like this? Yeah. That type yeah, of yeah. He's like, yeah. why do you think I'm wearing this? And I'm like, uh, kid, you yeah. just fucked. You're done. And I'm pretty sure he got fired for it. Yeah. If yeah. I remember yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. He got That was a pretty recent video. Yeah. When, I was disgusted by it, man. Yeah. Absolutely but, uh, disgusted. Rather than just going, yeah, yeah. I, I, there's what I call, um, like a, not correctable, um, recoverable. There's mm-hmm. recoverable offenses and there's non recoverable. Yes. The way you just conducted yourself on that video, that is non recoverable. Nope. I do not want you at my agency. That's right. And I got into it with some people like, oh, that's blue falcon shit. Da, 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 da. I would I'm like, okay. Is it the way I would have handled it? No, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have pulled him over. I would have been like, what unit is it? Mm -hmm. For me, if I see a unit flying like that, first thing I'm thinking is like, shit, my radio's not on. Yep, he's going to something hot. He's going to something hot. And and, and so I follow and I see his lights aren't on. Now I'm like, what the fuck's this guy doing? Right. He's hauling ass. And it, it, like, you know, we're we're not talking 20 over. We're talking over double the speed limit in an area. It's not the freeway. It's a residential area. Mm -hmm. So... Now I'm calling dispatch. Hey, I got a city unit over here flying. What's going on? Sure. I don't have a city unit logged on over there. Yep. Then, okay, I got to pull this guy over. Pull him over. Like, you tell me your first words, I'm on my way to work. You're not even on duty? <laughs> like, you just you just sealed right. your own fate, bro. Right. Sorry. Exactly. You moron. And, okay, well, now we got to deal with this a different way. Sure. And if people are listening, well, how what's a different way to handle it? I just got the unit number. Figured out who his sergeant was, called him. Hey, your dude's mm-hmm. doing some stupid shit. Yeah. Maybe you need to correct this. Email him the video. Yeah. Follow, you know, if it's if it's gonna be like that, you know, maybe you follow up with IA because that is going to do it. And so the listeners understand, uh, you know, a citation is gonna hold him accountable municipality wise. But when you get his agency involved and internal affairs involved, now it's more career oriented right and they they're gonna have different options to where is this retraining now the, the video that you and i are talking about i think that's termination within 30 seconds of the the episode airing on youtube if i was a chief because yeah. you're not going to drive that unit and engage the citizens that you freaking sworn to protect yeah driving like that yeah um as a supervisor which i don't know if you're going to be doing it at your level or not but like i said i'm in a small agency but 
every night I'll take a group of five traffic stops on on the the Axon body cameras and I'm going to review them. And this is not to yeah, go, yeah, to, yeah. go to the guy and be like, hey, you're being rude. Randomize audits. No, yeah, yeah. no. This is, this is, do we need training? Are we treating citizens correct? Right. Uh, I mean, I, obviously, I'm, I'm very close with everybody I work with, but I want to make them the best they can be. And it's not just a negative thing. No. If I see you do something really good, and I'm going to reward that as yes. well. Accommodation. Shit, dude. We've had you, a lot of steak dinners, I'll yeah, tell you that. Because cops don't brag about themselves. No, they don't. And that is another thing that I wanted to do with the podcast. It's so hard for me to get what I call the good cops on right. here. They right. won't do it because yep. they don't. they feel like they're bragging. I said, listen, the problem is I can get... The, the mediocre cops and even the bad cops, I can get them to do this all day. Sure. I can't get the good ones. Yep. It's hard to get the good ones. I need to convince. So I, it's always a battle convincing the good yes. cops to come do this. I had one last night and my co-sergeant, uh, mm-hmm. he was working evenings. I work mids, but mm-hmm. um, his name's Red and I hope he hears this. So uh, I'm <laughs> like, dude, he, cause he's got such a unique personality. Now one, he's, he's a black ginger. So he's already a unicorn. Right. And right. Uh, oh, that's awesome. he's one of the funniest guys I know, but we're very like-minded when it comes to how we work and right. keeping a sense of humor with everything and sure. just, and just having fun with the job. And we were, fuck, we bullshit it all last night. And, uh, it's like, dude, I want you to come do the podcast. And you know, we're like, we're laughing, chucking it up. Right. I was like, man, you should do the podcast. He's like, no, <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, just straight, straight papers. Yeah. I was like, I ah, know. Yeah. I was like, Gah. and so I'm sitting there like, listen, you worked with my dad. You know how he was. If I can get him on here. Right through this argument i was like then you should be on here you tell me you're better than my dad <laughs> right, right. <That's laughs> give him the guilt trip man. yeah so awesome. i don't know if i convinced him yet but right. Right. um that that's kind of the, the premise behind it so yeah. uh trying to get the good cops to get on here and talk and and, and share this common yes. person this is a yes. common perspective what we're talking about is not uncommon right. um it's just big picture shit mm-hmm. that's what i say it's big picture stuff and, and speaking of commonalities and being a patrol officer and you know there's always jokes like oh that's the fire department there and this is a joke oh they're the hose draggers yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you know we're the gunslingers and then we got the medics and what are they you know and, and we need everybody you know we're yeah. joined we're out there we're working with each other and um but speaking of one of my contacts on linkedin and i don't have his permission to say his name but i won't but he's he's created a company man and, and he's primarily working over on the on the west coast of of all places and he's basically found a way to have the government, well, it's obviously our tax dollars are paying for it, but it's for a good thing. And it's turning normal police officers into EMTs. And oh. you know, doing no, this. No, thank you. No, well, so doing <laughs> this for 21 years and at the larger agency that I worked with, it's, you know, when you get to, you, you, you get to that accident and you keep people off and you, make a hole for medics to get in there, meds to, you know, whatever agency's coming to, to do their thing in the fire department. And you don't do CPR, you don't do this, you don't do now right. things have changed a little bit with, with, uh, putting on a, you know, a, a, a different thing when you were to stop a bleed and that type of thing. Um, but now, and, and I've heard from a friend, a friend of mine that's doing a lot of work down in Austin this may be coming down the pike and this is a, a maybe, so I don't know, but in, in a few years we may have to have, <laughs> if you have a, a group of 10 officers on, just to give you an example in one area of the east side of a large agency, uh, one of those may have to be per legislation, a medic, because what can law enforcement do that ambulance and FD can't get on scene? First. We get on scene <laughs> yeah. sometimes really quickly. Yeah. And if we have somebody, not me, I'm not really good at that kind of stuff, but there's going to be a lot of guys that are, and they can apply that first aid to a little bit higher level uh, EMT yeah. type stuff. And that's awesome, man. If it saves a life, but mark my words, man, it's coming down the pike. Yeah. It's, it's going to be there. Now I will find the right people. It's not going to be me. I'm just not good at it. I would like some more buddy aid first aid training to be able to apply it to yeah. me, a family member if you're on vacation. You know, I want to have a little bit of knowledge, obviously, but I'm going to leave the medical stuff up to the medical professionals okay. for sure. So I had a guy on, Brandon Griffith, I think it is, or Griffin, Griffith, I think it's Griffith, but um, uh, law enforcement officer, Pinell County. Mm-hmm. We talked about Mark mm-hmm. Lamb, all that shit. Um, this is how I got on the Pinnell County kick Sure, was through Brandon. He was the first one. He has a nonprofit. He dropped dead for 16 minutes at home. Wow. Luckily, his wife's a nurse. And not only is she a nurse, she's like a cardiac 
area nurse. Wow. Um, and he's a big dude. He's like 6'4". He's a big guy. Right. And uh, he dropped. Boom. Heart just stopped out of nowhere. No no genetic issue, no nothing. It's wow. something that can and does happen. Sure. Um, she kept him going. Uh, you know, CPR got his legs up, kept fresh the, the, yeah. Whatever blood was there, oxygenated blood towards right. his heart. Um, long story short, none of the people that showed up had an AED. So that's his mission now. He's got Brandon, or Brand, I think it's Brandon Griffin's Blue Heart or something, sure. something to that effect. I can't remember the name of it exactly. But um, got him on LinkedIn and all that stuff. I sure. get you connected yeah, with him. Yeah, please do. Interested. Please do. But he's, he uh, turned me onto this company called Aviv, I believe that's how you pronounce it. A-V-I-V-E. Okay. Um, and their website is aviv.life. So I'm going to try to show it to the camera real quick. Um, so you can see that there. But uh, what I like about this company, what they just released, is an AED that is literally this big. Really? Yeah. So you put that thing. It can do infant and adult. Um, and it, you know, if you've ever seen how AEDs oh, yeah. work, yeah. Um, it essentially reads. It, it lets you know. Do you know? Yeah, we got to do compressions or stand back. We're going to shock them, whatever it is. But um, from my understanding, that could fit in a cargo pocket. Oh, that's awesome. That's how little it is. So I I told my academy staff, Mm -hmm. um, I was like, hey, like bare minimum, let's get this at the academy and then slowly start to get it out to patrol, um, whatever the cost is. Well, through attrition, if we could start getting that out there. Absolutely. Yes. So. Uh, I'm a big fan of what this company in particular has got going on, what Brandon had mm-hmm. going on and how he got me onto that. So with what you're going with, yes. I, if you have a tourniquet in this, you can handle almost anything. Sure. In, in my opinion, yeah. from what I've faced out there. Um, because maybe, maybe some Narcan. And Narcan. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good call. Um, and yeah, we have Narcan. Shoot, I got it. I got the expired shit at my house. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. care. <laughs> you know, if it's, it's still going to do something. It's, it's going to do you something. Bet. Yeah. If you I bet. happen to need it around here, but um, yeah, man. So that now we have tech med. I come from, I'm lucky. I have a very well off agency that's very supported. Sure. So training and doing, we have a tech med unit and if people aren't familiar with the tech med unit. They are basically trained up to be able to go in with SWAT. Mm-hmm. And they are their sole function is is medic Medicare uh, buddy ca- uh, aid helping with casualties whatever it is but they have the, the the tactical knowledge of clearing and backing up the SWAT guys if one of them go down or whatever it is sure. so um, very cool Absolutely. and uh, one of my good friends from the department she is now trying to be a physician's assistant but um, she's about to graduate I think in December Brandy wow. Camper. Did you ever hear the Matt Pierce story? Uh, yeah, Matt Pierce was one of our heroes up there. Well, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so Good dude. Yes. So Brandy's the one that they were both on the TAC Med team. Oh, okay. Brandy's the one that went out there yeah. and got yeah. his ass. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So Brandy, she basically brought the TAC Med That's awesome. unit with Is the it, rest of the guys. I don't want to say I remember just right. Her. I think she used to work for an ambulance division before she got into. I don't know. Person. She might have. That's yeah. She was an job. army medic. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And she had her med bag with her and. Yeah, yeah, she's a badass. Yes, yeah, yes. she's got more than one. Say, I've witnessed one. She, she used the AD on a guy um, that I worked with at the mm-hmm. academy, right? And then um, I used that same AED on a SWAT guy. Right. His, um, he had some sort of widowmaker thing happen to him. Oh wow! Um, and we put the AED on him in it. Saved him, so it's scary, man. I mean, it was. Just, I mean, just like the. The dude in football. I'm not a big football watcher oh, yeah. personally, but you know, obviously it covered all the the channels for what had happened. I mean, just hits somebody, stands up, and falls yep. out, and uh, you know, by the grace of what have you, I mean, he he was okay, you know. But uh, yeah. good lord, man. Yeah. But I think an AED sh- should be in every first responder's vehicle. Vehicle. Yeah. A, a, as a start. And yep. but then again, you know, you saying size wise. If you get a pocket bed, sized one, fuck yeah. Dude, I mean, that's it. I'm sure this is going to evolve to where, hey, here's the new iPhone 25. And it's also an, an AED, AED. Yeah. You know, yep. uh, my luck, I'd be on the phone and it, <laughs> <laughs> it might look, wake you joke, up. Joking aside, but I mean, technology. Yeah. Just from the time I got into law enforcement till now, you know, when I got in, the first agency I was at had a black and white camera. Yeah. And uh, the little transmitter that I had on my belt would work maybe 30 feet away from the car and they would just. 
Yeah, the audio. Yeah. So, yeah. So if I had a domestic, you would always see me dragging people out of the house. All right, we're gonna talk right here because <laughs> I wanted it on tape. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and and it became a thing where you, you know when you're training people how to handle a traffic stop and you sure. got people out of the car, you're like, why do you guys always bring them? At the front of the car, you know, you're like, yes. here's some of the question, like, because this is where my cameras were. Yes, yes. And they're like, well, you have a camera on you. I'm like, but you don't understand. I didn't have this before. Yep. I grew up in a time before yep. these were available. So it's just an instinct for me yep. to bring everything to the front of the car <laughs> and, yep. and see the body cam or see the, the webcam, not okay. webcam, with an in-car camera. Yep. Um, yeah. And that all stemmed from uh, Rodney King. Yes. yes so a did. lot of people it don't did. don't know that that was the catalyst for that. Body no. cams catalyst was from the Ferguson case. Um, and you know, I tell people, I'm like in police work, as long as we can learn from every tragedy and create something better, that's the best we can hope for the, the Mike Brown crap, you know, the DOJ, everybody, even the guy that we found out that was a false narrative. Mm -hmm. It was fake. He didn't, everything that happened that was claimed to happen was a lie. Okay. But, you guys are you're not seeing the silver lining. Now we mm-hmm. all have body cameras. So despite, you know, I feel bad for that officer. But if I were if I were in that cop's shoes and and the only thing I could hang my hat up on knowing that I can no longer do law enforcement is the fact that I had created body cameras for every cop. Yes. So if that guy, if that cop ever happens to hear this, and I'm still gonna call you cop because you got a bad deal. But um if he ever hears this, just know that because of you, law enforcement's improved. Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. And and we hate, I hate to say because of tragedy, but, and it sucks that it takes a tragedy, Yeah, you know, to do that. And, you know, I, I see a lot of posts on, on Facebook or LinkedIn, Instagram, and it's, um, some of the memes are, why does it take a nine 11 for us to come together? Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't remember exactly where I was when nine 11 happened. I'm sure mm-hmm. you do as well. Semester one of college. Right. And, yeah. uh, I was, I was working for a armored truck company and I was navigating law enforcement. Just got out of the military. Yeah. And nine 11 matter of fact, was a neighbor banging Surprise on the door. You didn't get recalled. <laughs> and, uh, a na- neighbor banging on the door and I opened the door, never met the guy. And he's like, do you have your TV on? I thought he was like selling me cable service. I was like, we got cable. <laughs> you know, I think we, I, I had a late night at whatever yeah. establishment the Bro, night before. I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I, we got cable, man. And he's yeah. like, "No, do you have your TV on?" And I'm like, "Do you do you hear my TV? Is it too loud? Is it you know?" He's like, "No, I'm sorry, dude, <laughs> but the World Trade Center just got hit." And I'm like, "What's a World Trade Center?" Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, yeah. I mean, I mean, I knew what it was, but I, I knew there was yeah. a World Trade Center in hit Dallas. By what? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was in Bedford, Texas, at the time, just in an apartment. And off Central Drive, and I'm like, what the hell? So I turn on the news, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. And then I'm like, my mom's an American Airlines flight attendant. Where's she at? Oh. Pull up her itinerary. Portland, Maine. Holy shit, you know. And I'm not going to go into any more of that, but she's still alive. I can tell you yeah. that. But, um, Holy shit. But just... just Nine eleven is very close uh, to all of us, just being America. But there's a yeah. lot of reasons why it's it's very close to me. How as well. old were you? Twenty uh, three. Okay, so I was eighteen. Really naive as fuck because right. the first plane hit. I already had. I didn't have the news on. My stepdad had the news on already. Sure. So he's watching, and you know that breaking news. Right. You know, a plane hit the World Trade Center, and I'm looking. I'm like, oh, that that traffic air traffic controllers fucked. Oh yeah. Like I yeah. thought for sure, like he just navigated somebody into the wrong shit. Sure. So I'm like, and then we're watching, and here comes another plane. I goes, oh, that air traffic controller's yeah. done. They're gonna yes. these these going to jail. Yep. Like that's yep. how stupid I was. And then I'm getting to school, mm-hmm. drove to school, and my brain started to fire a little bit. You know. That, that, they, that wouldn't be, they wouldn't have kept that air traffic control. So I'm starting to use my brain a little bit. And I'm like, maybe that was bad. Maybe that was, you know, cause they weren't even saying that on the news right. where I was at. It was right. local news. So they weren't saying anything nefarious at the time. They're like, sure. this is crazy. What the hell's going on? And, uh, we get to school and I'm like, and then we find out, I think it was the Pentagon yep. that got hit. And I was like, oh. Yeah, because I think they got hit before PA plane went down. Yeah. I remember it. And I was like, oh, shit, we're under attack. I'm like, I'm, and so I'm telling the instructor, and this is a very traditional style. It was the, you know, the stadium style seating. Sure. And is 
three hundred students in this this course that I was in, right. and um, I tell the instructor, I was like, "Hey, we're we're under attack. Like, I don't think we should have class." And he's like, "We're having class," and I'm like, "And then." You know, they, they start saying for sure that the Pentagon had got hit. Like, sure. they weren't sure yet. And then they said, I was like, I'm out. I'm yep. leaving. And then it was funny because as I left, I wasn't the catalyst by any means. But right. everybody, nobody was taking their seats. They were just standing around. Right. And then we just all fucking left. And then instructor, the instructor was being a dick. He was like, no, you guys will be marked absent. Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, yeah. Pretty sure that was excused. Later yeah. Oh, yeah. Room. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, it was that was a crazy time for me. Right. And uh, I was already, I wanted to join the military right at 18, but right. um, I had partial scholarship for college. Oh, so yeah, I, yeah. I went and um, it didn't work out. Obviously, the freedom right. was too much. <laughs> well, what, you know, in what I remember after that, so let's just say a couple of days after that, obviously people are, are, are not going into work. They don't know what's going on and it's, it's, it's mass confusion. Mm -hmm. They're playing the video with, with George Bush and the dudes coming in whispering in his ear. Well, he's, he's reading, the, the, kids. Yeah, he's reading yeah. the kids. Um, I'm, I'm calling my buddies, uh, in the Marines. I'm like, Hey, what's gay? Hey, we're, dude, we're getting activated. I'm like, Oh shit. shit. I mean, this is getting real, real quick. Cause I knew my guys were going to be going quick. Yeah. Uh, with the unit there with, and, uh, just everything going on and I'm, I'm trying to become a cop. And right now I'm, I feel like I'm doing nothing for the country because I'm driving a money truck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then we're getting called in at work like, all right, we're going to put an extra shotgun in the trucks. We don't know if the terrorists are going to come invade and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, okay, you know, just going with the flow of things. And yeah. The last thing I wanted to do was be freaking driving a money truck during this, yeah. during, during this time. Cause I wanted to be out either getting redeployed I wanted to be on the streets here protecting, you yep. know, so that fast tracked my, my searching ability to, to, for getting into the Academy. Um, but just remember, I don't know if you remember or not, but driving on the highways, dude, there was no road rage. No, there was American flags on, I'd say one Everything. out of 10, I mean, Everything. On, you know, and, yeah. uh, I mean, I had two on my little Ford Ranger four cylinder truck, uh, midlife crisis was slammed to the ground with twenties on it. And, and I had my, <laughs> had my two American flags hanging out the back of it. And, yeah. uh, and you go to a gun store, the line would be out the door passing by the recruiter's office. There was a line out the door, uh -huh. all, all of them, all four of them. I mean, just like, yes, this is, this is great. I mean, it didn't last very long, but for the time that it lasted, yeah, I wish they would air that a little bit more. I mean, I hate, like we got onto this, but it takes a tragedy to bring our country together mm -hmm. because when we're rolling, you know, the stock market's going good. Oil's going good. Gas prices are down. It's screw you, man. I'm in first and da, 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 and it's everybody for themselves, but you have a tragedy and then you realize what country you live in. You do live in the best country. we got to come together. Yeah. I don't want another tragedy to happen, but I wish the country could remember how we were right after nine 11. Yeah. Because that's so important. Yeah. The, the whole so, never forget. Yeah. They forgot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They forgot. Big time. Yeah. Big time. Because I'm with you on that. And it's, uh, you know, it it shows how good we have it in the United States. Yeah. Because I, I heard it on Joe Rogan, and I know he didn't make it up, but he got it from someone else. So hard times create hard men or something like that. Sure. And you know, easy times create soft men. Some, right. I, I can't remember the whole saying oh. necessarily, but um, that is how it is here. That's, that's what we're dealing with is we... We have it so freaking good. Very good. That, you know, the there's two things that give people real perspective in this country. That's either leaving this country. Yes. Look at Brittany Griner. I give that girl credit. Right. She fully admits, I may have, I may have fucked up. <laughs> yeah. I may have jumped the gun on this now that I've been held prisoner for five years in Russia. Sure. And I don't blame her. No. You know what I mean? I don't blame her. She she had it so good that you we all it's primal. Sure. We all have something that we need to fight. It, and, it's very true. I, and when you have it so good, you're looking for something to fight. It's yep. it's instinct. It is. And I can't blame somebody for getting latched on to something just whatever they feel is the needs to be their fight. My right. fight for me is just natural evil. Right. 
that that's why I'm it a is. cop. It's it just is. natural evil. It's easy. Yep. It, they, and people think, oh my God, Levine, you do so much. You're so busy. You get, I'm like, no, I actually I attach myself to very easy things. Sure. That I, I'm a cop for a reason. It's a job that will always be there. It is. It's not going away. No. That's why I picked that particular job. But it's not o- overly complicated. I want to help. There's always somebody that needs help. Sure. So cop helping, it's not because I'm brave. Right. Uh, <laughs> it has oh, yeah. nothing to do with it. I'm very well trained. Right. I can tell people that. I've I've been shot at. I've had I've had I've been tested to see how I would react. Right. And it wasn't my brain. It was my training. Training took over. Absolutely. So when I people are like, oh man, you know, cops, you know, you're so brave for what you do. No, I, I've been very well trained because yes. I don't know how I would have reacted with poor training. Sure. And I, maybe have you yeah. felt the same way? I, it, I do. And so, you know, like I said, I came from a, a mid-level agency where I did my, I'm going to call my whole career at before I retired the first time. And dude, we were some training sons of guns, man. I mean, it's every other month I get an email. We're going to the range at TCC or wherever uh, police Academy. And we're going to bring our vehicles in and we're going to be shooting from under the car and this and that. And I'd have some, some, there's always going to be naysayers. Like, have you ever been to our Shooting range? Uh, down on feeling. Uh, yes, yes, I have, but I have not had the ability to to engage in it. I've gone down okay. there, and, but I would love to go down there and and play around a little bit with oh, the with I the professionals that I are there. Get you connected. That'd be great. Yep. That'd be great. I mean, we'll make it a that's a badass a LinkedIn thing. And it, I've got a lot of uh, folks that I know that work at that work there, and I'd love to do that. We'll we'll definitely talk more on that. Okay. But going from, I guess I'm going to segue into this because it's a big thorn in my side, and I speak very vocal about it is the lack of training across this country for law enforcement and the lack of identifying and helping people with mental health. And I'm, and everybody's like, Oh man, everybody talks about mental. I was like, yeah, everybody's talking about it. And some agencies, great agencies are doing about it and Mm -hmm. they're, they're having open conversations, but we are still circa 1990s. (laughs) When you look at the entire country, Okay, all 50 states in a whole mm-hmm. because we have a lot more rural areas than we do than the big yeah. agencies. And, and, and news always focuses on these big agencies. Well, now that I've worked at two, I've seen what it's like at a medium sized agency, you know, and and if I needed something, it was there. If I asked for something, I could get it. I didn't realize how good I had it till I retired and then went up about an hour and a half out of the metro area. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah. I'm getting all my gear ready. I'm now the new the patrol sergeant. And I'm asking my boss, hey, next week, um, I've got some tier one guys coming in, doing some training for some stuff. I'd like to get a couple of our patrol officers in there. It's free training, TCOL certified. And it's and it's n- nothing on him, but he was just like, ooh, um, do we have to provide the rounds? And I'm like, yeah, it's just five or 600 rounds per officer. And, you know, it's not not a big deal. Ugh. It's not in the budget. What's not in the budget? Rounds? Yeah. And it's not his fault. I mean, yeah. it's a small, you know, I, and he's a really smart dude. And I'm like, uh, yeah, well, so what What if I got a sponsor? Oh, we don't take handouts. I'm like, no, I'm just, let's, let's, I can get us what we need. It's a team. So these guys can get the training that they need. And as a matter of fact, yeah. this is an instruct the instructor course. And now they're going to become instructors. And I was like, sir, you can kind of see, you know what? It's just too short a notice. So I was like, okay, don't understand, but I'm going to try. I'm new here. And then uh, a couple of weeks have gone by and I've, I went to do my qualification. And then I became the range master at that organization. Um, and then I started developing some plans. Hey, let's do this, this, and this, and this. We could do this every month and a half. Uh, Rob Peter to pay Paul. We don't have to do this. <laughs> kind of looking at stuff and, but training is important. Hey, sir like to do this Ooh, don't think so why not ah, well you know because we have to have coverage on the street and I'm, I'm down for that but i've got you know schmuckatelli over here is going to come in and, and, and bob let bob off and he can come do the training and then next week we can circle back around and switch yeah i'll do it for free you know i don't have to be paid i just want to make sure my guys are you know because they, they said they haven't done felony stop traffic training since the academy and one of them's 11 years ago so yeah i was thinking maybe we you understand where I'm coming from at this. So yeah, the first felony traffic stop that we actually had, we were assisting another state agency that happened to be in our area. Um, 
oh, what do you say, gaggle fuck? I, anyway, yeah, it was horrible. Um, you know, cars weren't lined up, and the officers that are listening, instructors that are listening. I mean, you know, you had you had officers getting out, get behind their trunk. And I think they watched Hawaii Five O before they did this. You know. Up like this and then coming back out yeah. <laughs> i'm just sitting back and you know you kind of as a supervisor on you're you're up and you're coming out and you're like what the hell is going on here i'm getting punked i'm waiting for ashton kutcher to come out over here and say hey, we're just getting I just we're deployed, actually professional i just deployed with charlie's angels yes yeah. yeah so it was it was bad so i'd got these guys and we did some work on the side and and don't get me wrong the administrator he wanted everything but his hands were tied as well and this yeah. whole hands being tied for training that's fine. I, now I'm speaking to city council. I'm speaking to the citizens. Whenever you see something coming up that's either you vote for it or you want to call and suggest, call your agencies and suggest they get more training. They have got to have more training. And I'm not just talking shooting at paper targets. Yeah. They've got to go out here. They've got to be shooting at steel. They got reaction targets, moving targets. You have got to make it real. If you mm -hmm. don't make it real, when the real <clears> happens, <throat> People get hurt. Yeah. The threat does not stop. The officer's gun can get taken. You know, he doesn't have retention skills. He I mean, there's just so much that goes on out here that's scary. It, it blows my mind. Yeah. And then even, um, you know, where I'm, where I'm working at now, and again, it's not their, their issue, but it's just not in the budget. So everybody within that region goes to the range once a year, and they expel 50 rounds in their pistol and 30 rounds and the rifle, and you're not going to see it again for 12 months. What the fuck? And it's shooting at paper. <sighs> so, Jesus, are you T. Cole, our state? Yeah, qualified, absolutely, because you're using your five duty rounds, yada yada yada. But my my thing to T. Cole, and I know all those guys down there, and they're great guys. I hope they're listening. Get legislation to mandate training once a quarter. I'm yeah. not talking about qualifications. I'm talking about patrol tactics, range time, mandate it, force us to be better. When you force it, we find the money. We figure it out. Nonprofits created. People, yeah. there's, there's already organizations out there that are willing to help. But you have to have an administrator that truly wants to say, you know what? We are kind of the low guy on the totem pole. I don't mind taking a quote unquote handout to make it better for my officers, which yeah. then in turn makes my citizens safer. Yeah. So I get on a high horse about that. And on that same high horse, and I'm not trying to steal the thunder here, is the PTSD. You know, everybody, or not everybody, the majority of the general public thinks PTSD is associated with military, overseas. IEDs and yes, it is. That is that's what kind of brought it to the limelight. I was gonna say that's where we've learned so much from. Absolutely, and, and and I'm not degrading from that. I'm I'm a disabled vet. I can say this. I've got a thousand organizations I can reach out to. Being having my DD two fourteen and say, I need an issue, and eight hundred numbers are thrown at me, and it's not going to cost me a dime. And I can go to the VA, and I can do this, and I can do that. As a law enforcement officer, I can say, I need help. And they're going to, they're going to direct you to the cork board and whoever they have set up and you may get two visits and that's going to be the cheapest that that county or municipality <clears throat> or state organization can afford. Yeah. That's the number on the wall. And it may be internal, which I have a problem yes, with. Yes. I have a problem with that too, because what is it? It's the stigma. Yeah. It's the, you know, the whole time I was at another agency, it was still the, I know you're okay and you're not going to talk about it. You're right. You're okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, man, I'm good. Yeah. I'm well, good. not just that. It's like, how do I fully entrust the issues I'm having with somebody that has lunch every day with the chief or has lunch with my captain or whoever sure. it is? Like, I love people. Don't get me wrong. Sure. And it's not that I'm inherently untrusting, but I have a hard time with any sort of mental health issues that involve an internal fix. Sure. Give me a third party option. Yep. I, I want. I want that. I want that separation. Absolutely. And, and the first one that comes to mind, and this dude has never asked me to, to bring up his organization, but I know he'll be okay with it. He's a good friend of mine. His name is Randy Sutton. Okay. I've had Randy on. Have you? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Man. So Randy with the Wounded yeah. Blue. Wounded Blue. Is amazing. I, I have him on my website. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Wounded man. Blue is, uh, good. I, I have maybe five nonprofits. I'm, I'm about 
nonprofits that a hundred percent of the money goes into a hundred percent of the yes. costs. I have tunnels yes. for towers. Mm-hmm. I have, um, and they don't, I, I get zero kickback from any of these guys. Sure. I simply put them up there because they are such phenomenal organizations. Oh, that's awesome. Man. So I have wounded blue, uh, 10, seven outdoors. I sure. have them, uh, t- tunnels for towers, um, wounded blue. And I think I got one more. I just can't remember what it is, but yeah. Right. No, that's awesome. You're, yeah. you, you are well aware, but for the listeners that don't know, you can Google Randy Sutton. You can look up the Wounded Blue. Uh, the more you help that organization out, the more that organization can help out law enforcement. And that is that third party yeah. outside the door of the police department, outside the door of the sheriff's office. It's a little bit more comfortable for that peace officer to to reach out to them. Yep. Because that, that's, that's the biggest struggle I see um, is people that are not comfortable with reaching out because... They've always been taught, you're good, this is everyday life, you're supposed yeah. to be able to see that stuff, oh, that was a, you were on a crash, and that was a car seat out in the field, and you flipped it over, and it was that bad, let's go get lunch. Right, yeah. Shake, and, and that's, you shake know, it off. you know the officers that I'm yeah. talking about, I may have even been that person, because I'm not saying people become numb. It's they the learn. culture. It is. And they're like, okay, that is okay. We we have to do this and it's okay. We can go to these scenes and then go eat and then go to a domestic and then go to a shooting after that. And then after that, maybe a cat in a tree or a lot of low stuff. I mean, most of our jobs, just so everybody knows it's not in this or doesn't have family in this 80% of the time, it's a a lot of driving around and a lot of low key stuff. It's that, that one or two calls a shift that drive the blood pressure up. You're driving without violating policy to, to get somewhere really quick to either back up an officer and you hear, and I don't know if you know what you probably do. You say you've been shot. You know what that round sounds like going by. Yeah. Oh, that was a little too close. Imagine it in a downtown area where you can't tell the direction. Bouncing off of everything. Yeah. Oh man. The first time I got shot at, it was a bike cop bicycle. (sighs) What are the fucking odds? Really? 17 years of law enforcement. I'm a bike cop for three years of that. Right. And that's the first time I get shot. I had been in patrol like eight, nine years. I Uh, I finally decided to do something a little different. Sure. A little less (laughs) stressful. So it was the bike cop that shot in your direction? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. I I was a bike cop. I was a bike cop. Oh, shit. Yeah. We had. How was that, man? Let me touch on that. I fucking loved it. Did you? I loved it. So I'm one. Mm-hmm. I'm like you. I'm so glad you brought up training because I, I was a, a academy instructor for three years. Oh, awesome. And part of the reason I did that was because I was so frustrated with some of the trainers that I right. saw and the way that they present things. I'm like, no, like, you know, I'm like, you, you guys are, you're putting all the, you, you just gave me a month's worth of swinging a bat. Right. Fuck that. Give me five days of swinging a bat for some of the, the slower recruits and let's do an yes. extra three weeks of jujitsu. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because the the every non compliant arrest is on the ground. Sure. It, that's what yes, you, and I you, agree. you try I to agree. argue with a cop, you know, that's like, well, we never want to go to the ground. No, I don't want to. But guess what? Anytime <laughs> shit hits a fan, guess where I'm going? Yeah. It's the ground. Right. And if I'm not comfortable there, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Yep. I'm gonna start relying on the Batman belt. Yep. And that's where I start to get in trouble. Speaking of the Batman belt, and I don't know how y'all do it at your agency. Are you trading with the dog? Oh yeah. Okay, thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, because I see all this stuff online, and I and I'm just speaking now as a citizen, looking up stuff on YouTube, but having a little bit of knowledge. And it's X Y Z Police Department, and they're doing their defensive tactics training in shorts, and they're in shorts, and yeah. they got their little Gym water wear. bottle, they got their phone, and they're like, "All right, we're going to do some PPCT, which is pressure point control tactics, yeah. and we're going to." Do an arm bar. We're going to do some wrist lock stuff. And then boom, it's done. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well now go put your shit on. Yeah. Add 80 to 90 degrees with 70 yeah. to 80% humidity. Fight with the guy for a little bit. And mm-hmm. you ran code there. Now go in. Hands yeah. on. Let's see. Let's see how yeah. you do. Where, now, what, what I will give my department credit for is we are so far ahead of the curve when this come, comes to this stuff. Um, we, we don't train block training. Mm-hmm. When you start the academy, day one, you are already started in control tactics. Right. And it goes, it's the progression of a fight. That is how we teach it throughout the eight Good. months that our academy is. Good. So for eight months, you're doing control tactics, not for four weeks, and then you move on to you sure. know, arrest, search, and seizure. And then, and then you, you move down the line. No, right. every day. 
you are in, until you get to the range. The range right. is your only break from it because you got to learn to fire, and we give the range all of their time. Right. So um, that that's the only break you get from it. Okay. But it is when, if somebody wanted to copy our format, it is the progression of a fight. Every fight starts on your feet, and then it gets taken to the ground. From the ground, we teach you to transition. It's the shit. That's good. It that's is really good. good. It is, and that needs to be a model for other agencies. I agree. And and I, I'm going to give you a horror story. Your listeners are going to be like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> so so, being an instructor now for for years, and I love being an instructor, but I but I also loathe what I inherit sometimes because of somebody's laziness. And I'm going to speak about regional academies, police academies yeah. in the great state of Texas. So we had this little thing going around a while ago, uh, COVID-19, something like that. Okay. Um, academies were, oh my God, everybody go home. I, I get it. The country was in pandemonium. Um, but I had a couple of future employees in those classes and then they graduate. They come to me uh, as one of their phase instructors for FDO. And I always, if it's, whether it's first phase, third phase or ghost phase, I figure out where are they at? What do they need to learn? And how do we go from here? And how can I set up this, this future law enforcement officer for success? So one of these guys that I got and and I love him to death. um, He was honest with me. He's like, sir, how do you, how do you fight? He's like, Oh, well, uh, keep in mind, this is a young cat. Okay. He was a jailer, now he's a deputy. He's taken the oath. He wants to do, he wants to be, he wants to learn. He's a sponge. But he just came to me and he's just like, Well, how do you fight? And I'm like, Are we talking about defensive tactics, PPCT? Are you talking about like in the octagon? Where, where are we at? You know, because he, he's a big kid. And, <laughs> yeah. And he's like, No, man, where, I just want to know. So, like that last traffic stop, if the passenger got out and swung at me, what should I do? And I'm like, are you about to tell me the answer or are you, is this a serious? Cause I was confused. Right. You know, cause he had, a, he can answer a lot of my traffic questions. He can answer stuff out of the penal code. I'm like, freak. Yeah, man, you're doing great. But what do you mean? He's like, well, I've never even wrestled a grown man. No. Again, I was waiting for Ashton Kutcher to come out yeah. and I'm like, okay, so we went back to the department or back to the, to the break room and I sat him down. And I was like, so, when you were in the academy and you were fighting the red man or you were getting sprayed with OC spray and you were doing weapons retention and then affecting an arrest, because I figured it's a regional academy. At least they're doing that. Right. He's like, Oh no, we did our academy online. Holy shit. Dude. The only thing they did in person was the range. Holy shit. We, okay. No defensive tactics. And they certified them. Yeah. That's nuts. And we just talked about this last night. Really? Me and my my buddy, we were talking, doing the Sarge uh, thing. He goes, just so you know, your team is a COVID team. And that's a term for these sergeants out there. Really? COVID teams. Because they came out of the academy through the COVID issue. Uh-uh. And it, it, now, don't get me wrong. The, the, our academy mm-hmm. still did sure, what sure. they're supposed to. But they don't know how to be proactive. Yeah. Their job was you take a call. You decon, and that was it. Right. There's nothing else. And that in 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 during COVID, things really died down crime wise. Sure. Domestics went through the roof. Oh, yeah, but yeah. other than that, so these these kids have no no idea. And it's not their friggin' fault. It's not. And and T. Cole, if you're listening, something's gotta be done. Something has got to be done with the ones that got screwed. Yeah. Going through there because some of the agencies they were picked up with do not have the budget. And I don't know if it, if people down in our capital do not care, but I get it. The Academy is to take a test, but you're dealing with human lives. And I'm yeah. not talking just to the officer. I'm talking to people they're serving. Right. And, and when you got human lives involved, that's when you have the media involved. And eventually the, the arrows can be pointed at y'all. Yeah. They have got to come up with something to yeah. fix this. Either it's a grant. Okay, you're a COVID baby, and you are going to get access to this, and the department's going to be paid for. We have got to yeah. fix that problem because there's got to be thousands in Texas mm-hmm. that have gone through that. Yep. That that's that's dangerous. And here's why it's your problem, Tico. If you're listening to yes. this, here is why. Let me get down my soap 
yes. soapbox. When your officers are not trained, like your guy that was mm -hmm. asking you how to fight, yep. now you've got an unconfident officer. An unconfident officer is going to be hesitant. An hesitant mm -hmm. officer is going to escalate his use of force. And, and what do I mean by that? Well, if I'm confident in my abilities and I have to go hands on, and I am, I'm a purple belt in jujitsu. I've rolled since 06. My dad's nationally ranked in judo. Uh, I, I've had martial arts in my background my whole life. Sure. So for me, I am supremely confident going hands on. Guess how many times I go hands on? Zero. Yes. Because I'm, I don't, it, whether it's the way that I present myself or the way that I'm, I, I obviously have a gift for gab. Sure. So the way that I talk to people, whatever it is, um, my confidence level in my training just to go hands on, I don't need my Batman belt. Right. It's there for when shit is serious. Oh yeah. But if I don't have that confidence and I allow things to escalate now, the propensity for using my Batman belt has just significantly increased. Yes. So then I'm going to go to a deadly force situation more quickly than a guy that has been trained. So this is why it's your issue, Tico, because you've neutered them, not, and it's not your fault necessarily. It's just yeah. the way the cards were dealt at that time. But now that you know, you have a duty to fix it. And for people out there listening, like, what do you mean? You know, just because you, you if you're hesitant, like, it all correlates. So if if I'm if I'm a confident in my training, I, I'm less dependent on the Batman belt and I am less likely to get into a use of force. I'm more likely to be able to squash things at a verbal level or at a very minimal use of force level. But if I'm not confident and I allow things to escalate to a point where a higher use of force is needed, whose fault is that? Right. It's not it, it isn't just the bad guy's fault. It's no. both of our faults because, um, the best example I'd like to give, um, I've been on video before hitting somebody who apparently wasn't doing anything. But what did I see? I saw a clenched jaw. I saw a bladed stance and I saw a pumped fist. Yes. I saw this. If you're looking at the camera, I, this is what this guy's hand was doing on the side. Right. I wasn't waiting. I slapped the shit out of him. I, I, open hand slap, boom, right. and took him down to the ground, put him in cuffs. Right. Because I wasn't waiting. You avoided something much worse. Right. Yes. And so that is what I mean. If I had waited to see if this guy's going to hit me, and let's say he did. Let's say he got a hold of me and he hit me a good clean one. And now mm -hmm. I, all of a sudden I feel a little rocked. I'm like, fuck that. And I pull my gun and I shoot this dude. Right. I am justified in shooting him. Absolutely. But that was because of my hesitation. Right. Instead of just handling business, now I got a possible dead guy versus a dude that just got slapped and embarrassed. Sure. That's it. And that, that's huge. And I'm going to go back and talk on these new guys that I talked to. And I talked to, to new guys just on LinkedIn from all over the country. And, and I give them the speech, well, dude, there's a gun involved. Why aren't you more from command presence to articulating what you're going to do to getting on it quicker than what you're showing me in this video that you sent me. And they're like, what do you mean there's a gun involved? Your gun, motherfucker. Yes, you, it is. Your, but what? But he didn't have a gun. I'm like, so what you just said, you know, if this guy hits you first, what if he got, and I say lucky, because yeah. sometimes it's, it, it's, it's the luck of the draw. He hits you the right area in the jaw and he knocks you out. It's, it, it doesn't matter to me. I'm a big guy. I'm 300 pounds. I'm over six feet tall, and if somebody hits me in the right area. You're 300 can, pounds? Yes, sir. God damn. <laughs> so, yeah, about 345 in uniform. Oh. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but if somebody hits me in the right area, I mean, big guys fall harder mm. than small guys. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's probably going to wake up the people in the trailers around the neighborhood. Like, what the hell just happened? You know, <laughs> or houses, whatever. You know? Yeah, sweat laying but, uh, down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what, what I'm telling these guys is we, we've got to be more – particular in our training if the the if the agency is not going to provide it for you and you're deciding to stay at that agency find a local gym find the place work with your lieutenants work with your commissioners your we've got to we got to look at the the use of force policy we've got to make sure it's there and the use of force policy is for everybody everybody's like i don't even like talking about use of force because that's when you it's because you guys like to beat up on citizens I'm like no actually this is what protects everybody we yeah. we follow a, a continuum and and you try to explain it to some people and they'll understand or you know or or they're not going to and some people you just can't get through at all but these young officers they're not even getting told that story in the academy of 
there's a gun involved and it's yours. Yeah. And they, the look on their face, I wish I had mm. it on video. They're like, well, I never thought about that. I'm like, that's not your fault. That is not your fault. Were you in the military? No. Yeah. Were you in wrestling in school? No. Did you play football? No, I was in the science whatever club. And there's nothing wrong with yeah. that. They're probably smarter than I am. Yeah. But we've got to apply ourselves. And if we weren't taught that, we've got to learn it. If we want to stay in this career, we want to make sure we come home at the end of the night. And that's why I'm harping it. First thing is my job. You is hit a, my wheel out. I'm glad. Yes. I can. We'll, we'll fucking talk about you this bet. for three hours. This, this is what I love. We have got to do it. And I, I'm going to tell these officers out there, too, that do a lot of the bitching. I'm bitching right now, but I'm bitching because I want to make a change. Brother, I'm sure you're not leaving that gun at your department when you're off. Yeah. And it's also on you, the officer out there that's listening, that's bitching about their department. Go train yourself. Yeah. Go out to the range. Do things on your own. Don't yeah. just rely on your department. Even when I was with a department that provided more training than I've ever got, I was so motivated on my weekends that I didn't have something planned. I would go to the range and put myself into scenarios with a buddy that had more experience than me to put me into that because I want to go home at the end of the night. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure all my guys go home at the end of the night. I want to make sure that citizen doesn't have a scar or a mark or something that I could have prevented because of the training I put myself through. And there's not enough of that going on. So not only is it the administration's problem, T Cole's problem, legislators problem, um, everybody at the departments, but it's also that officer. The officer is kind of like a citizen. He's, he's, I want this. I want this. I want this. If they're not providing it, they don't have the money. You want it that bad. You know, it's something good. Go get it yourself. Yeah. Well, they're not going to give me T. Cole. <laughs> T. Cole's not going to be there carrying your casket either. Yeah. Freaking get the or training. Or telling your kids. Yes. Or telling your wife. Or telling you your bet. mom. You know, um, what I like that my academy still does, which is very rare. Um, within the first two weeks, first thing we do, how many of you have been in an actual fight? Not with your cousin, not with your sister. How many of you have been in a real fight? Right. We ask that question every academy class. And nowadays, you're lucky if you get three hands up out of 60. Um, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it is a, something that you have to be aware of. Because in the early 90s to the, you know, 2000, early 2000s, that rate was vastly different. A little different, yes. Um, so... What does that tell me? Okay, shit, I've got a lot of people that haven't been in a real confrontation going into a career field where you are likely to be in multiple real confrontations. Sure. So, so now you have to adjust. Yes. Well, part of our academy is you get in the boxing ring and you get in on the ground. You're grappling. Sure. So what we do is we pre-fatigue you, get you good and tired to prevent injury, and um, and get your heart rate up. Sure. It It's to simulate... An actual fight, but your adrenaline's usually not going um, the same way. It's a safe environment. So, um, but it, it's the best we can do in a safe environment. So, get their get their blood uh, pressure going. Um, first thing we do is we throw you into a grappling thing with mm -hmm. an instructor. Three minutes or as much time as needed, because one of the things we're trying to see is where's your heart at. Are you going right. to keep fighting? Um, and two, it's to show you just how fish out of water you are on the ground right. because these guys that you're rolling with, they're experienced. I, I'm one of them. I will torture you with a neon belly, sure. you know, and I'm not doing it. And I'm having a conversation with an instructor who's rolling right. with another student right next to me. And oh, I'm yeah. like, yeah, where are we going for lunch today? Meanwhile, you're on the ground fighting for your life <laughs> and I am not even giving you in my attention. Sure. Um, so it's a wake up call to show you how fucked you are on the ground with some people. You bet. Um, and then, as soon as you get done with that, you go over, you're strapping gloves on, and you're going into a boxing ring with the your your co-recruit. Sure. So you guys are going in, and you're learning that you can take a punch. Yep. Uh, meanwhile, us as instructors, we're showing you like how far on the brink you can really go in a fight. Sure. Trying to push you, and then you go. Then whoever fought best gets to take a break, and the one that fought worst goes in with an instructor gets lit up who gets lit up yeah um and the goal i know what people are thinking no you guys just go in there no we there we are not in there to knock you out we're not in there to do anything Jeez. we are in there to show you that you can take a hit and keep going yep. and we choose our shots and two we are we are again checking your heart are you getting hit and just giving up like it's a it's a thing it's a wake-up call mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you're necessarily out of the academy but we have to change perspectives. We got to show you like, look, 
that's the first time you've ever really been hit. Right. And you're still standing. You're still here. Yep. You know, sometimes you're not standing. Sometimes we got to get you back up, get your head back in the game. But what's an example? So it, just out of curiosity, I know what it was years ago of a your size agency in the state of Texas. Do you have physical um, physical qualifications each year? Yes. Okay. So what, what does that kind of look like? Um, it's lame. I don't is like it. it. Uh, because okay, it's it's twofold. One, um, you got guys like me mm-hmm. love that shit. Sure, which is great, you know. But you got other guys that have been in some shit, and they don't want to get hurt. Yeah, and they don't want to go full speed. And I understand that. I'm not against that. I understand. But at the same time, where is the middle ground? Sure. Because if it, all that ends up happening is we go through the motions, we go mm-hmm. through, go by the numbers. We let you go on your own, and inevitably you got the the go getters in one little group, and then you got the the rest of them that are fucking off because sure. they they have zero desire. Now we do test them like, all right, show me the move, and right. you got to show me the steps. And so what about? And, and that's I'm glad y'all do that. But that's there's a, that's nothing annual. Like that goes on. Yeah. What about running sit ups, push ups? Is yep. there an annual? Yep. We have an annual test. Um, we have an incentive program. You pass it, you get a thousand dollars. Um, so uh, you have that. Um, it is mandatory. You do have to do sure. it, but as long as you pass it, you get a thousand bucks. Right. So that's not bad. Um, they do it by age. Do they do it no, by? No, no. No. There's a, just a flat standard. Um, Good. It it's okay. Right. Is it enough to keep somebody in shape? Right. No. Let, let me uh, let me shed some light. You may already know of what it is in a rural area. Can you fill out an application? <laughs> you have the job. So, and that's scary. Yeah. And I get it. Now, don't get me wrong. At the municipality in the rural area that I went to, I was called by the chief. He's like, "Hey, you got to go do your physical and uh, physical stuff." It signed off on it at the county hospital and there's gonna be some running and I'm like, freaking awesome. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. So got my board shorts on and went up there and, and got it done. And man, I was like, so what do we do first? He's like, well, there's a flight of stairs over here and you have to, you don't have to run, but I need you to walk at a high pace to the top, walk at the high pace at the bottom. I'm going to take your pulse rate. I'm like, cool. That's a warm. What do we do after that? He's like, well, I'll get to that when we get there. It's a lot. So, Let's do this first. So I, I ran up the stairs and ran back. I wanted a fast time, you know, took my, pay, my my pulse or whatever. And he's like, you're good. Your pulse is only 70. I'm like, cool. What do we do now? He's like, well, we're going to take you to the training room for this one. I'm like, oh, man, they're going to hook me up to machines. I'm going to get on a treadmill. Gonna like they're going to take some oxygen in a way. Yeah. yeah. And the music's going to be going. Yeah. So we get in there and he's reading the piece of paper. And he's like, all right, hey, help me draw this line. And it's literally yarn. And it's at. 20 or no it's at 36 inches and he draws it across halfway across this room so it's three three feet you know off the ground and he's like i need you to step over that without touching it i'm like jump over it or he's like no god no you might might twist an ankle i need you to step over that so i thought maybe i'm gonna have to do push-ups and boom at the other side so i I stepped over i'm sick over six feet i step over it and i'm like he's like you passed um we don't have a dummy right now because we had to loan it to the med crew. So I'm going to go get a nurse and hold on. I'll be right <laughs> back. And I'm like, okay. <clears throat> I was like, man, I didn't know I was going to have to cough. Uh, <laughs> so nurse comes in. She's like, are we ready? And I'm like, oh, I don't know what to expect. <laughs> right. I was like, do I yes. keep my shorts on? Yeah. She turns around and puts her arms up and I'm like, my patent this person down to show right. them that I know what I'm doing. They're not even law enforcement. So I go up there and the guy's like, no, no, no. What are you doing? And I'm like, well, you haven't instructed me on shit, dude. And you, you tell me, he's like, well, this is the first time I've done this. So, um, you are to grab the dummy, let them lie in your arms and you drag <laughs> them for eight feet, set them on bench. So it's a body drag. Yeah. 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 It's a body drag. I'm like, okay. So she over, does uh you know yeah i literally drag her five feet and uh set her on the bench and he's like well welcome to the whatever police department it looks oh like you passed God. everything that was the physical exam holy shit 
you know, and I, I mean, there was no, I, okay, I'm sorry. There was a two minute stress test walk on a treadmill. Ours two, is, two, two minutes. Okay. Now I came good. from another agency that was evolving as I was there. They eventually, when I left there and God bless them. Now they're doing the DPS with the rowing machine, 2000 meters. Yep. Yep. I did that, and the first time I looked at that machine, and I was in powerlifting at the time, and I'm like, me I'm going to break this motherfucker. Yeah. Me and my buddy, and, and he probably won't mind me saying his name, Tim Klontz, we worked out every night together, and we're looking at that thing, and they're like, huh, piece of cake, right? So we, yeah. we look over, sit down, and the lady puts it on a three. She's like, all right, we're going to time you, and you got to get to 2,000 meters. So I go, boom, I start going real fast. I'm not, I can't even see it. That's so far away from me. And I'm going, I think I'm going for like three or four minutes. Right. Yeah. And this thing is smoking me. I mean, I lift heavy every night yeah. and I can go run. I do hit training and I, and I was like, Ooh, what's my time? They're like, you're at 400 meters, dude. You got, I'm like, you gotta keep going. <laughs> boom. And I mean, I'm, I'm going so hard. The front of it's lifting up. Bam, bam. Yeah. It's a pre-core. I think is what it, you know, rowing machine. And, and dude, that whipped my ass ass yeah. so i first of all i disrespected it i was that veteran yeah. that looked at something new going that ain't gonna do shit and i got on it and i'm like i've got to beat this damn thing. Oh, i got so i bought one i was gonna say yeah. I was just getting ready to say not only did you have to beat it i bet you went yes and got i one. went and bought one man yeah. and, and it became the i the loathed machine in the house see it's one of my favorites it is now yeah. you know i look at it and 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 I've been doing so much on LinkedIn and other business stuff. And for the past nine months, I haven't been in the gym okay. and it shows I got out of the shower the other day, man. And I'm drying off and I, and I hate to go down this route with all your listeners. I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, Whoa, Whoa, mm. <laughs> what, what is that? You know? And, and my wife comes in, she's laughing. She's like, what? I was like, cause I used to have the four pack, not a six pack, but I had a four yeah. pack and a, super built as and, good as a 300 pound man. Yes. Have. Yeah. Yes. You know, it usually my, my ideal weight is 265, and I'm just a big, just a big country boy. Yes. Yeah. And, and I, and I can, <laughs> I can take somebody out of a car or remove the person, pick up the car, you know, jokingly, but yeah, bam, bam. Um, yes. And, and yeah. I can still do those things, but I'm not in the shape that I used to be. So I looked at myself and we have a gym in the house. I was telling you about it before we started the show. <laughs> So my son, who is 16, now he's just a little bit taller than me. He just broke probably 212, 215 pounds. He's about to go into his junior year in high school, and he's a big boy, and I've been training him in the gym. His coaches have been training him. He's a big kid. So I watched him walk out. And I, Caden, if you're watching this, I don't let your head get too big. Uh, I watched him walk out of the gym the other day, and I'm like, oh, dude's swollen. And he's <laughs> big. Right? I've been training him, you right, know. Yeah. And I can hear him back there, ah. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, yeah, I'll still beat his ass. Yeah, Jokingly, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and he's a great kid. I've never had to do that. But uh, so I was like, I told him the other day, and I'm like, hey, I get off at 6 a.m. I want your ass up. We're going to be in the gym by 7. So wake up, take your pre workout, get your protein ready, Let's get your breakfast. And, and he's like, and this kid is not a morning person. I'm not, I don't know anybody that's really just like, hey, it's five o'clock in the morning. Yay. So he got up, dude. Yeah. He came out, ate his oatmeal. <laughs> Wasn't much of a conversationalist like me when I wake up. Everybody kind of leaves me alone for the first 30 minutes. I'm a, I'm a grouch. But, man, we went in there. And right now I'm leaning on your table, and my triceps are shaking. So oh, yeah. we went into the gym, and and Caden looked at me, and he's like, do you want to go first or do you want me to go? And I was like, you can go first. So he got there, and we're just doing incline bench. And uh, I'm looking at the weight, and I'm like, <laughs> so Shit. you know it's a nice machine that yeah. we have we're blessed to have it and uh he's like hey did you want me to lower the weight for you like, no okay. man i'm good you yeah, know yeah. Light i lay weight? down and he goes around he's leaning on the dumbbells he's just watching me and i'm like Shit. so i pick this thing up and i lower it down i lock it in and i'm ready to go and I, the first rep that goes up i'm like oh i gotta do 12 because we do 12 10 8 6 12 and 12 yeah. going up and weight each time and that first one, I don't remember. I think we started off at like 180 and, and it just, just like well, that first rep. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm weak, but I can't let him see it. You yeah. know, yeah. and I went through it and we got done. And then we finished out with blasting our triceps going to failure. And I, dude, I stuck with it. Now my body is like <laughs> mayday, mayday, yeah. you know, but I'm just like, yeah, man, I'm giving him smiles. As soon as I look away, I'm like, mother yeah. God. The, the dad pride. Yeah. So, oh dude. And it was, and, and then I went to sleep that day 
and I'm laying down in bed and my body's just like convulsing. <laughs> I haven't worked, like I said, almost yeah. a, uh, 10 months, something like that. Yeah. I'm reminded of a Toby yep. Keith song. <laughs> I, I get out of bed the next day. I couldn't push myself off the mattress. Uh, just kind of rolls. Yep. I go and I get my breakfast, whatever it is, oatmeal, cereal or something. And I get down and I'm, nobody's awake yet. And I grab the spoon and I get down on the cereal. Right. And, and I'm pulling it up and it's like, <laughs> and, and then my, I hear my son because he's got his new German Shepherd. We were just talking about dogs, and he's really good with him. He gets first thing he gets up, he's got to take the dog out. He's still potty training, so he takes the dog out. And when he comes back in, I just put the spoon in there. I'm like, "Did you sleep good? Yeah, Dad. Cool. You gonna finish eating? Yeah, I'm just taking a break." <laughs> so he goes back in the room, and I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> was he gonna let him see my see. wife?" I, I couldn't feel it, you know. Just you know. <laughs> Driving to the studio, obviously my wife's gonna pick me up because I, yeah. I had a, I had a drink. We we play it safe. Uh, driving here, I'm like doing this little weird hold to the steering wheel. My wife's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "Drive, absurd, babe." I'm gonna be honest with her. You I wasn't know? gonna say anything, yeah. but when you shook my hand for the first time, it, I was like, "Probably for, shaking." For a big yes. dude like this. And it was it was everything hurts. <laughs> and then tonight when we get home, I'm doing back and biceps. Oh, it's shit. gonna be a horrible workout tonight, but I'm not gonna say no. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's summer break. I'm you got to embrace the first two weeks. It's gonna suck. Just get yeah. past it. And you know, I've been doing it for twenty plus years and gotten pretty heavy. And you know, and this is a compliment. I've been, I've been. People come up to me and they're like, "You're juicing." I'm like, "What's juice?" Yeah, I didn't know what. You know, they're like, "You're using steroids," and I'm like, "Protein steroids?" Right. Yeah. And they're like, "No, you're just you're too big to be natural. You're, you're not a natty." I'm, I had to go. Oh my God! They think I'm using drugs. Yeah, no, I'm you not gotta using start drugs. seeing the veins. Yeah. That, like that's the first indicator when you're super yeah. vascular. Oh yeah, some and people have that genetically. I get it, but sure. Yeah, when you start and to be, uh, yeah. Well, just like my other agency, and I was like, came in the other day, and you were, you know, you started off at 350 on bench, and I'm like, well, dude, I'm almost 300 pounds. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're like, well, I, I, my max is not even. I'm like, you're a buck 75, brother. And I mean, right. just it, I should actually be higher right now, but I'm not. But yeah. Appreciate the compliment, man. Yeah. Thanks. You know, yeah. but anyway, all I'm saying is, you know, mental health, very important, physical, very important. And, and there was the deciding factor when I got out of the shower the other day and actually had time to look in the mirror for two seconds as I'm cleaning up the beard line. And I kind of looked and I'm like, Oh, that's, that's not very graceful. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> you, like, you catch yourself resting your arm on your love handle. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, that's not oh supposed yeah. To be yeah. Like, when you're out on the street, yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, what, is, what is that? <laughs> So we're, we're yeah. sitting in the patrol car and, you know, yeah. you're looking down and you, you're, you're, I have a, an outer carrier vest by yeah. Angel Armor. I'm wearing their, their hat. Best vest in the world to me. Most what? comfortable. Oh, dude. When you're standing outside, so, you feel the air going through it. And you're like, oh. so I wear a, um, it's in test phase, but mm -hmm. I wear a Armor Express. Um, what I Good like, company. what I like about theirs, um, one, you know how hot it gets. Sure. You can, it's double breasted, so you yep. can, you can unzip it. It folds over, you know, but what I like is there is a, a slot so you can throw a hard plate. In. Yep. Same with mine. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That, that to me is I want form fitting. I mm -hmm. want it to fit my body right? and I want to be able to throw a thing in there. But Did you know that I have rifle plates in 24 seven when I have it and you wouldn't know. No, I believe that. It's yeah, yeah. that yeah. comfortable. Cause I have, um, a couple American blast, uh, armor plates mm -hmm. um that i got shit 2016 i went and worked the rnc in ohio oh, okay yeah. as a bike cop oh wow so um doing that the dallas five had just happened not too long right. prior to that so um i ordered a a strand hog carrier right just for myself and then um they had nothing to do with police work sure but uh then i got those american blast system uh plates they're like they're so light. They're super oh, yeah. light. Buoyant? Know? Are they buoyant too? I mean, can you fall in a pool and they'll float? Probably not. I don't okay. think they're that. Right. Um and uh but anyway, uh I got those. I got the side plates. Um I got all that stuff with that strang hog carrier. Um and uh it's the SWAT color. I wish I would have sure. thought about it, but I didn't. They didn't have the option at the time for mm -hmm. any other colors. But uh so anyway, the point I'm getting to is those plates, um, super lightweight, and oh, yeah. uh, I can throw those easily into my Armor Express thing. But at the time, Armor Express was the only ones making those. Right. Um, and then uh, Safari Land has come out with one um, since then. Sure. And that is who's approved right, right now at our department. Right. Um, but I am always looking. Man, if you're, let me, here's the deal. Obviously, LinkedIn, 
I, I reached out to a guy that I saw on there and I'm like, and I looked at the best and I looked at some of the videos and I'm, and I'm not an expert. I, I'm not, I, I love guns. I think I have four. I, I love vests and I own, I think one of my own on the side. You have four you know, guns. I, that's it, man. I'm not, I don't, I don't have a rookie. huge, how are you ever going to be a share? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I've got what? Right. One, two, right. I've got my rifle right here. Oh, by the way, oh, that's one, nice, man. one day. One day, I figured you'd like this. Oh one. heck yeah! So I got the law folder, and then I don't know if you've ever seen one of these, but this comes off. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, so man! You basically take this, and then this just if I remember correctly. I think I have to open up. Yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. but that pops right off. Oh, that's so, awesome! So, um, yeah. What's I, the maker of that? You would ask me. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, They made these for the Air Force. Sure. So you could put these um, under the pilot seat. So you break it down. So basically it's a truck gun. And what I want, and and I'm not a gun guy. So I don't want to, that's why I kind of brought it out. Um, I would like this to be canned. I've never had a canned weapon in my life. Good thing you're in Texas. And, but this is a, this is a 300, but I can take this off and put my, five five six back on oh wow okay yeah so the goal is to get my five five six barrel and get this attachment on there and then i got two hot swappable barrels oh that's awesome but um yeah so a little truck gun with my my aim point on here that's nice hey Uh, are 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 motors in certain cities in texas still having the collapsible m4s on them that you know of i don't know okay i'm not sure i i do know that they right. have very collapsible yeah. guns. I, I know. Weapons. I know. Uh, Sig was was making an AR or a uh, M4 there for a while. That was nice and collapsible, not gas. Yeah, you know, piston gun. But, but was, I I had a guy that was worked for Arlington PD, but mm-hmm. he no longer does the can stuff. Okay. And that's what I was trying to do is get that thing integrally suppressed. Mm-hmm. But I lost that connection, and sure. so now we'll talk. I, I, oh, you, I, yeah, you know we'll that? Do, okay. We'll, yeah. We'll talk. That's so, yeah. that's something I'm because I, I want to get that, but then right. I want to get my gun um, painted. Uh-huh. Uh, what do they call it? Cerakoted. Sure. Uh, that was Cerakoted. My my grandpa's gun that I turned into a little Boba Fett blaster. Right. Um, but I want to get, and I'm gonna pull it up so the camera can see. Oh it. yeah. I want to do something like that, but for the for oh, my oh heck yeah man not this not this pistol not these ones. Right. I have a I have a Glock 19. That, right. uh, I want to get it like this, but I also want to do that to my rifle. Oh, that'd be awesome. So man. I'm going to show the camera. And I've posted this on our website before, but yeah, you got a donut gun. Heck yeah. I think man. it's cool. That's awesome. So that's awesome. That's the goal. And having that bitch integrally yeah. suppressed with that being like a, like a baby blue. Right. To match the, the oh, blue that's yeah. on the donut. Yeah. That'd be the shit. So do you ever, now that you're in a mid-level supervisor's role, actually the real supervisor's role in an agency and one you're probably going to spend the most time at, do you ever bring donuts in? Oh, well, for sure. Okay. Yeah, I have a Shipley's right on my route. Oh, there so, you go. Yeah. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> but uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up while we were talking about training mm-hmm. is people ask, well, what do you think is the most important? And because... There's a ton of training that everybody wants. Oh, you have to have a uh, crisis intervention training. Oh, you need to have um, procedural justice training. Oh, you got to have perf training. You got to have all these sure. different tra- animal control training. Mm-hmm. You know, they, all these different hats they want us to wear. If you want me to lower use of force uh, by officers, which is, seems to be the most pressing issue ever with cops. Sure. Since the dawn of cops, to me, is use of force. Right. Grappling. Yes. You, I agree. You train them in grappling, and you will lower your use of force. Yep. And people don't understand that concept. They, they, and I understand. It doesn't. It's counterintuitive. Mm-hmm. You're going to train them to fight. They're going to want to fight more. No. No, it's not. It's not that way. It's going to end it that much faster. It's going to end faster, yep. and it's going to end safer. Yep. Every Less time. injuries on both sides. Yeah. You got guys like Tom DeBlass, uh, um, uh, Brandon McCaffrey. Uh, there's, there's some of these guys. Um, oh, what's the guy out of? Washington or I had him on my freaking podcast and all of a sudden I can't remember his name. Asian dude. Mm -hmm. Um, he's, a uh, he's a cop up there, but he's always on social media doing jujitsu in his uniform. Mm -hmm. Um, cool dude. Um, but I had him on the podcast and I'm blanking on his name right now, but, uh, another proponent knowing full well, you know, you got GST out there, Gracie survival tactics. Uh, I'm an instructor for that. Oh, awesome. Um, 
that is how much into the the weeds I am with the jujitsu side. It's not that I'm biased. It's that I'm proof. Mm -hmm. I don't get any use of forces when I do. It's very minimal. Right. Why is it, is it because I'm socially, uh, not inept, but yeah. uh, positive. Like I'm sure. good socially, but yeah, that's part of it. But the other part is, is I am so confident when it comes to sure. grappling, it doesn't become a factor. And when it is, it's done. Yep. Like I, there's not a lot you do because when you start to learn this, even the person that does jujitsu two days a week for six months, you could be a crappy, crappy sports athletic person. You may have no athletic bone in your body. You do it for two, two days a week you know, hour, two hours at a time, six months, you can handle eh, 50% of the people sure. you ever deal with. You bet. Yeah. And I agree with that. And, and, and going to that and how we're, you know, de-escalation. I mean, I, you, you mean type, verbal judo? Well, yeah. The repackaged, you, renamed. Yes. So yes. You, you hear verbal judo, de-escalation. De I mean, that's a huge hot, it's one of those hot steamy topics yeah. right now. Like being transparent. Uh, and then I look at, <laughs> the, look at my past and, 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 and the past of many officers that I've worked with uh, recently and, and all the way back to when I started. The bottom line is talk. Yeah. Don't be a dick. <laughs> I mean, I mean, am, am I wrong? No. I mean, I put that on one of my LinkedIn posts the other day, and I think that was the eighth thing. You know, sometimes I'll, right before I go to bed in the morning, I'll get these, I don't even know where it comes from. I'm like, I'm going to take a picture, I'm going to throw it in here, and this is just Banning's uh, thought of the day, okay. and I throw it down, and, you know, boom, send it out. And I'm, I'm reading, I'm like, some people will understand, some won't, and usually more, the majority understands it, and they're like, dude, friggin', just think. When you get on scene, that's a human being you're dealing with. Yeah. You have no clue what he's, and, and to the people out there that are going to break the law in the future, you have no clue what that <laughs> officer just left <clears throat> yeah. coming to you. We are all human. Could We're have been not a robots. dead baby call. You bet. And, and, and we may have just seen, and I'm not sticking up for the law enforcement, but, I'm, but I'm, it's true. We have, may have just seen the worst call in our whole career. And now we're coming, we're trying to hit that reset button and deal with the problem that you have that may have took 18 years to, to compile. And now it's exploding and we're expected by the general public to solve Let's it. extinguish this fire in yeah. five minutes and make sure everybody goes home. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to do our best to do that. <laughs> you know, we're not just police officers. We wear, I don't know how many hats, man. We go out there and do this. So <laughs> my, my, uh, I fucking hate this argument. And it doesn't matter who you are, the trolls out there, this is their, well, you signed up for it. What do you say to that? <laughs> you signed up for it. I'm glad that people continually sign up for it. No, we're not going to get rich doing this. And I can say that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I can say that with passion because with the paycheck I make is one of the highest paid members in our patrol division. If I was single living in a one bedroom studio apartment, I would probably still need to float a check or two every month to get by. But by the grace of God, I do different things to go out and, and, and make money. But I watch these young guys come in, getting hired by agencies like mine or similar ones. And they're not making, I put it to you this way. A manager at Sonic makes more per hour than anybody underneath me or myself. QT. But yeah. QT, oh, dude. Yeah, QT. They, they kill it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I saw that first thing. I was like, that's a typo. And I'm kind of online. And I'm like, that's not a typo. Holy <laughs> shit. Right? I mean, damn. You know, it's <laughs> like, maybe I need to give you QT security. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how the well that go on LinkedIn, but I, hey, I'll give it a shot. Right? No. <laughs> we just don't have any QTs in my area. We got all subs. Okay. So, uh, and all subs are great people, man. They're, they're good folks. But uh, it's, but yeah, QT. Uh, another one. What's that other big uh, raceway? Well, well, racetrack, and then you have a, racetrack, well, what's yeah. what's the one up there by the the race the actual racetrack? Bucky's. Bucky's. Oh man. yeah. So that's a that's you know, a different. And now and, 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 a, different and a guy a guy sent me a message and he's like, hey dude, I, I wanted to ask you this, and I was like, like I said, I get a lot of messages on LinkedIn, and he's former military tier one guy, and he's like, do you think I'd be looked upon for my guys if I took this job? And I was like, well, who cares what your guys think? Yeah. What do you want to do? Because he he just got out. Okay. He's a team guy and he just got out and he's like, well, what's your opinion of it? And I was like, well, tell me what you're doing, who you're working for. And I'll give you my opinion. And it may be worth two cents, maybe worth a million bucks. I don't know. He's like, well, it's, it's for this large gas station and they're, they're wanting to offer me $200,000 uh, for security director and I'll have seven stores. And I'm like, 
I don't see a problem with that job. Not at all. But Damn. it depends on what you can do and what your skill set is, is. Do you have the skill? For, I know you're a team guy, but is that your, do you, do you, can you actually do that? Yeah. Don't just take that, whatever you're wearing from your uniform. And can you actually do the job? That's my thing is these t- tier one guys are highly trained and then they go into the, the private sector and they're, well, they got the job because of this, but they still don't know how to do this. Yes, you can learn. Yeah. Okay. You can learn all day long, but don't use this to make sure you know how to do this over here first. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's a big thing to me. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm seeing that we talked about the real time crime center. Shit. Yes. Yes. I am seeing a lot of fucking snake oil coming out of the woodworks. I bet, man. With law enforcement guys. I bet. And, and, and it you is. Know, I want you to keep me in the loop on this because you, you, you gave me the breakdown on that. And I want to, however I can help and whatever, you know, anyway. Let me just, tell you something with where you're at. Mm-hmm. And this is, um, so I've been talking to the Pinnell County guys. Sure. And uh, they're like, oh, yeah, we've seen a real-time crime center. We went up to NYPD. We saw theirs. It's amazing. We can't have one of those, though. We're not. We're not at that level. I'm like. All you need, literally, is a radio and an MDC. Mm-hmm. That is a real-time crime center. Sure. Can we expand on that and make it better over time? Sure. But at the bare bones, that's all you need. Right. And we can we can go, we can do a lot of damage sure. on crime from there. So, yes, absolutely. If you want to get involved with absolutely. that, dude, I'm telling you, the, the real-time crime center stuff is just, it's insane. Right. Like, do you guys have any LPRs or anything like that? So we area? just started getting ALPRs. Um, like I said, my agency is a little different. Um, <clears throat> we have ALPRs and the, I'll just say the employee that I know that has them on his vehicle, I know ALPRs when Vigilant Solutions came out with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually found a murderer uh, at, a, at a city here in North Texas. A veterinarian was killed at a great mine. I ended up finding that murder out of Saginaw. You know, it's on the news. So I can say it's out of Saginaw PD and it was years ago. And I was the only one at my agency because I kept writing them emails. I'm mm-hmm. like, I love your ALPRs. We don't have the technology, but how do I? And they're like, oh my God, stop emailing us. And here's the online login. We'll give you a 30 day free trial. And I was using my iPhone to scan plates, going through the apartment complexes, doing different things, coming to a red light and grabbing that thing scanning all the plates there, looking for returns. It was a trial basis. I'm testing, testing tune, you know, kind of looking at it. Use that technology to find that murderer. And now I think that agency has it. They, okay. they, they got it and they got it on several units. And I think LPR is amazing. Yeah. Fixed LPR to mobile LPR. Vigilant Solutions is amazing. Now owned by Motorola, I believe. And I've sent y'all, if y'all are watching, I've sent y'all an email. I want to do some stuff with you. Contact me. Let's do it because the LPR is the future. I don't know what you're about to say about it, but I believe that's an amazing technology. Mm-hmm. We're not using enough of it. Oh. ALPR is not mapped where I'm at. We just got some. So he's showing, I'll go back to this, this employee. He's like, come check this out. Look at all these plates I scanned today. So he's opening up the log and he's showing the pictures of them and you have the verification. Here's what the computer reads it as. Here's the picture of it. And it's all hundred percent. And I'm like, that's awesome. You get any hits. He's like, I don't know, man, it's not connected to the state system, but we got the cameras. And I'm like, that's awesome. What the hell are you going to do with it? Are you drawing up a map? That's not connected yet either. But and I'm like, and I'm waiting Shazam, right? Where's, where's it coming at? And it's just not. So I'm, I'm glad that we're stepping in that direction. But when we step off in the new technology, let's make sure that we have the contracts in place. We're doing it. It's connected in a DPS T lets all the, the hot sheets, everything's coming out. Yeah. But it's just not there yet. So we are going in the right direction. Though. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk offline. You bet. I've got, bet. Oh my God. I'm going to blow your mind. Okay. Um, I'm excited about that. Um, okay. Well, we've got about 15 minutes left, okay. sir. And I want to make sure that we hit that. We've hit what I want to hit. Sure. I want to make sure we hit what you want to hit. Um, so what haven't we covered that you think is pertinent, man? It's, uh, trip here? M- my whole thing is the public's perception on first responders and better yet law enforcement in a whole. So I'm trying not to say mainstream media, this or mainstream media, cause I don't get political because I took an oath and my oath covers, I don't care what political background anybody has. If somebody is in need, I'm going to come or somebody from my agency is going to come if you're in our jurisdiction and we're going to do our damnedest to help you from whatever technology we have or if you just need a ride, if you need your gas tank filled up. I, 
doing these video reviews, like I told you about, I catch deputies and I say catch because they don't tell anybody. They find somebody, uh, a young family broke down on the side of the road. They go and buy, meaning the deputy goes and buys the gas can, fills up three gallons, gets them to the gas station, then dumps another $65 in their tank. One third of their paycheck for that yeah. two weeks. And they don't want accolades for it. Yeah, I mean, when I'm reviewing it. this, I'm like, you're my hero. Yeah. That's awesome. That's stuff that I do, you know, and I don't ever ask them to do that. That's their money. That's for their family. Right. You never need to spend And you're yours. coming from a different place. You bet. You're retired. I, you yes, got side business. Absolutely. Here. Yeah. And I can, I can do it without as hard of a hit, if, yeah. if you will. And then I see these guys do that. And then I'll watch that and I'll be quiet for a little bit. And then the next day I'll be like, Hey, do you want to go to JR's chop house and get dinner? And they're like, I was thinking more Sonic. Well, I know why. And I'm like, now come to JR's. They're like, no, I can't do JR's tonight. And I know why. So I try to pay that back forward on, Hey dude, come and get a meal. Yeah. I'm going to get the meal yeah. and you're not going to say no. It's a yeah. direct order from your supervisor. Right. Get yourself a whatever. If you, listen, it. public, if yeah. you want to win cops, it's through their stomach. It is. It it's is. the easiest way, baby. Yes, it is. And my <laughs> wife knows that. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's awesome. And today is Father's Day, man. You it know, is. It, it is. Yeah. Uh, and and, and it, shout out to my kids if they even have the time between the technology that they have to watch this. I feel very blessed to be a father. I was adopted at birth. A lot of people that, that follow me or friends with me or whatever know that. A lot of people say... I screwed up in life because I was adopted. Well, I'm successful in life because I was adopted. And I think I'm a little bit different than a lot of the other ones. I didn't go down that criminal road as a kid. Oh, I'm a bad student because I was adopted. Yeah. I got on drugs because I was adopted. Shut the. You, no, you, the adopted yeah. family that you got decided to take that extra step and bring you in. I know there's a lot of great stories out there on it and kudos to the ones that are out there adopting these kids from America that need the adoption. <laughs> yeah. and granted, everybody around the world needs some help, but let's take care of our own first. Let's right. stop sending money overseas. Let's take care of us yeah. first. But the, like with them hollow songs right. and stuff. Oh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a good shit. one, man. That's good one. I like it. I like it. And I say all that and I don't even have one on mine, but you know, but I, I give them out like candy. But, uh, uh, Another one, a buddy of mine, he's the, he's the CEO for AccuFire Technology. I don't okay. know if you've heard of them. Uh -uh. You need to look up Accu. And to my listeners out there, uh, uh, Brandon, he's, a matter of fact, he's my neighbor too. He's a CEO or COO of AccuFire Technology. And he's an, he's an Air Force guy, a former police officer. Uh, AccuFire's got the FLIR. You can throw it on your AR. You can throw it on, on any matter of fact, you can put it on several weapons and just type in the serial number after you've zeroed it and it remembers what weapon it's on and it goes back to that zero. It's pretty cool. It also what? records it also records every This fire. is a site. Oh dude, yeah. It's, what? It's, if you come up to Jacksboro, I'll show it to you. Holy shit. It's it's pretty awesome. And they 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 bought out another scope company too and they're they're uh they're 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 awesome, man. But yeah, AccuFire technology. But going back to the question you said, you know, what do what do we not cover? Um it's it's the negativity going around law enforcement. And I'm not here to say that, that law enforcement's perfect. It's, it's not, we are working to get, get better. When I say we, the ones that, that when they take that oath and it comes from their heart that they truly want to help people and it's, they don't treat this as a nine to five job. We are out here. We, we eat it, we sleep it, we breathe it. And we always think about our job, even though when we're with our families, I'm constantly doing a uh, military guys will say an AAR after action report or a debriefing. How do we do on that call last night? I mean, I'll, I'll have guys call me, you know, Hey, we dealt with that crash last night with a motorcycle and the, the guy's shin was, you know, his compound fracture and his tibia was sticking out and we had the medic from the, the police department show up and he reset it. And are we going to have any problems with that? And they're, they're thinking. And that's good. I want them to think, how can we do better next time? Yeah. You know, that type of thing. I want the general public to understand and the officers that are listening. There's a lot of good cops out here. The majority of them are great cops. Yeah. And, and I believe if you're a young officer in this field, find yourself a true mentor. 
find that guy that does not cross any gray lines, find a, a supervisor, sergeant. Sergeants are great examples. They've gone through the ringer as a slick sleeve. Now they're a sergeant. They are going to emulate themselves better than the sergeants that they had. That's what I believe. Because I remember in my career at a larger agency, I remember which sergeants I did not want to be like. And I remembered which sergeants that I absolutely said, dude, that guy's a rock star. Yeah. He's Superman to me. I want to be like him. He doesn't put up with bullshit. That's the guy I want to be like. And that's how I tried to model myself off of. And Tom Myers, if you're listening, that's it's you, dude. Um, but he was a rock star to me, man. He was a great dude. Um, he was really shy growing up. And finally, somebody picked his head up off a desk in high school and said, look, man, everybody's not looking at you. They're not judging you. And that's when his life changed. And he gives that analogy to every guy that he trained. And he can take a, a kid out of the academy, really shy, doesn't know what to do, to a rock star cop based on him just being calm. Yeah. And that calmness is derived from, I hate the word tactical in law enforcement because it's used in everything, but tactical breathing, box breathing. When you're going to a high priority call, remember to breathe. Even if your dispatcher is going nine, ten to nothing on the radio and she's or he is blah, 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 blah. Oh my God, and shots fired, blah, 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 blah. Take a breath. You're going there to help people and you're going there to make sure you go home at the end of the night and you're stopping that violence. We got to make sure we breathe. Because if you're getting as high tuned up, and the same goes for that officer, if they're on a call and the shit hits the fan and they're like, ah, you've been there. Oh my God. And you're in the background. And if you get people that keyed up coming to you, they're going to kill somebody on the way. Yes. I know you're going through, but breathe, enunciate, tell people where you are. Where am I at? What's going on? You're going to get help a lot better. And it's when I say we're in a shit situation, it just means, you know, the everything, everything's hit the fan and you need help and you want it to rain police where I'm at right now. I want it to rain at least one cop to come help me. You know what I mean? If I get into a pursuit, it's like, I'm the only one in it for now. I can't wait for somebody. And I've got to handle that problem. I might be lucky enough state troopers in the area monitoring our channel and coming to help game warden. We work a lot with the game wardens, the state park police up there. We're in a rural area, man. I'll be lucky if the other deputies with me, man, that's a freaking mobile SWAT team right there. And up where I'm at. Yeah. But All I'm saying is these new officers coming in or guys on the fence that want to join law enforcement, it's still as badass as it was, meaning you're out here helping people. You're never going to get rich doing it, but that's not what law enforcement is about. You're coming out here to help people. So humanizing the badge and not off any trademark anybody else is doing it, just the term humanizing the badge is what I'm all about. Understanding that we put our pants on the same way Every day is the people we're either arresting or we're helping. We are human. We're out here to help you. If you're a citizen out there and you're on the fence and you're listening to this and you don't like law enforcement, I hope you can see that I'm human. I'm out here and I'm here to help you. So if you ever come through my county and you need help, I'm going to help you. I don't care about your past. I don't care if you've been arrested before. You tell me you need help. That's what we're here for. That's what I want to end that on. So I like it, bro. Good shit. All right, sir. Well, thank you for coming out. Absolutely. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. We could have done a whole nother episode oh, just on rural police, <laughs> police, rural police versus city cops. Yes. Because like you said, big difference. There's I'm, backups two minutes away from me. Sure. A, a, sure. a long stint for most of the time. And for you, it's, Oh yeah. It's, well, yeah. I'll add 30 seconds on this. I'm not, I'm wanting to talk for some reason. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a Tito's. It, it is, man. It yeah. is. My wife be like, it's exactly the Tito's. You don't get to do it very often. When you do, you won't shut the heck up. <laughs> um, so when I get into rural uh, sheriff department, two fast stories here. One of my buddies, cause my training was two days cause I've got 20 years experience. <sighs> Here's your car. You know where the County lines are, figure it out. And that was a, a kudos and a, we don't have time for it. We need a body in the seat. I get it. So they taught me policies and procedures before I went out. So they covered that. But one of my investigators, and I know he's going to listen to this, Jeremy Howard, knows that I have never dealt with cattle. I'm a municipal cop, big city guy, right? You know, dealing with rush shower and, and, and the concrete. And now I'm coming out there as a supervisor with a lot of law enforcement experience. Okay. And I know how to ride a horse at a walk. 
Okay. I'm not okay. a professional, but as we know in Texas, the sheriff's department is responsible for estrays or cattle. So I worked at the city before this and I always, we're on the same channel. I always heard these guys. They're like, dispatch would be like, units be advised. We have five longhorns out on state highway 114 and blah, 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 blah. And I was sitting there as a city cop going, the hell are cops going to do about that? We're going to go pull them over, arrest yeah. them jokingly. You know, I knew they, they've got to get them back. And, and, the whole state of Texas is considered open range, and I didn't know that. There's no punishment for that landowner of his cattle getting out. Yeah. And a matter of fact, if an 18-wheeler smokes one of those, the 18-wheeler company has just bought a Longhorn, even though it's on a state highway. Yep. I was flabbergasted when yeah. I heard that. So I'd hear him go out there. So I'm on day shift. It's my first week of being at the, at the SO or sheriff's office. And they told me, they're like... Be advised, you have a bull out on Highway 1191 South in the lane of traffic. I'm like, cool. So my buddy, I'm walking out of the sheriff's office. I was getting done with paperwork. I'm walking out, and he's like, you better hurry. And I'm like, it's a bull. He's not going to go fast. He's like, no, brother, you probably authorized code. If something hits that, it could kill a person. And I'm like, what? I didn't, you know. Yeah, you don't think about you, it. Yeah, yeah, like what? He's like, yes. And I just got my first cowboy hat, right? And I had my felt Hell hat. Hell yeah. You know, and I'm a guy that five years ago, you want a cowboy hat? I'm like, I'm not that dude. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's like, oh yeah. Now I know that, yeah. I, you know, American Hat Company knows me. I go up there and they're like, hey man, we're gonna make you a hat. And they're amazing at it. Going back to this call, I throw that hat on. I'm walking out and he's like, hey, and this is a dude with experience. When you get out there, had no clues jacking with me. When you get out there, you get out of your car. You go up to the bull and you look at him and you, I want you to point with your left hand where you want him to go. And you take that hat and you say, yeah, just like that <laughs> at the bull. And if he puts his head down, he likes you and he's yeah, going to listen and go in there. He's accepted you. So as a canine handler, and I'm like, this yeah. guy's making sense. Yeah. It's obviously the yeah, physical. It's an indicator. Yeah. The voice uh, inflection. I got this. So I'm going out there <laughs> and I'm and I'm in a little uh, POS 180 mile, 180,000 mile Explorer slick top with just like three lights on it because that's safe. <laughs> so I go out on 1191 South and I find this bull and I'm like, Fuck, this thing's huge. I mean, it's like, mm, I'm looking at it like it's bigger than my car, you yeah. know? So I get out of the car and I'm like, all right, Jeremy told me to do, oh, oh. I see the break in the fence and I'm like, yeah, he puts his head down. I was like, he likes me. Oh, fuck no, he doesn't. Yeah. He's going to come at me. So yeah. and there's video of me standing on the hood of my Explorer. That's the second time I've had to stand on my hood of my car. And he starts hitting the front of my car and I'm texting him like, you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he just sends me a laugh face, like yeah, an LOL yeah. or a laugh face. He's like, what happened? I was like, he almost killed yeah, me. And yeah. he's like, you're a jackass. You would never do that. He's like, you just use your car and, dur, dur, and go. And so now I know yeah. how to get cattle in, <laughs> but it was a learning experience. And that's a little bit of fun. Welcome I wasn't to the hurt. team. Yes, yes. So yep. A little bit of hazing, but not bad hazing. I like it. So it was good. Yeah. Nice. Well, I appreciate it, sir. Thank I you very much. You. Always end with a little fist bump. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you.